Hi everyone. My name is Whitney Lucas. This is Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots and welcome back to my craft room today. We are going to do a Valentine's Day wreath with a little bit of an unorthodox frame. We're going to use a rectangle shaped uh, grapevine wreath. So I'm just going to take a few moments while I wait for you guys to kind of filter in here and uh, fill up um, just to say hi everyone. Hi Darlene. Nice to see you. Hi Vicki. Glad everybody's coming in real quick. I'm going to um, get my tablet squared away and then we'll start going over supplies and all the good stuff and then in my little exciting news. So let's see. Oh, yeah. My tablet wants to do an update. Hi, Lori. Thanks for joining, guys. Um, yeah, we're going to install overnight. We're not going to do that right now when I want to do a live. How's that? So, guys, I'm going to get this squared away. Let a few of you come in. Let me clear this real quick on here so I can see everything. And then uh, get things squared away on here. I can watch your comments on Facebook right over here off to the side so I can see what's going on. Um, and today I'm going to use one of those cute little um, rectangle wreath frames that I got um, shipped to me from Carolina Farley. All the way from South Carolina here to my house in Vegas. I made that happen. <laughs> That's just called... Um, commenting on their page and asking questions and them offering and then me taking advantage of it and then they did an awesome thing and uh, set me up with an order, an online link to order the things that weren't on their website and pretty much I think they, they'll do that for a lot of their stuff so we'll go over that too. Uh, so I got a couple, I got more than a couple, I got six of these guys and then I got four of the big picture frame ones uh, but way too excited to see what I'm going to do with this guy today. So let me just set that up there. Okay, Martha, hi. Thanks for joining me, guys. Ruth, Susan, thank you, guys. Howdy, Susan. <laughs> All right, guys, so today I am doing this beautiful, weird-looking guy. Haven't seen anything like this ever that I've ever noticed. If you see here, this is a rectangle grapevine. I like the little X's on here. kind of reminds me of window pane, a window pane design. Uh, it's also a weird shape, too. I actually was just kind of sort of panicking before this live to make sure I even wanted to do this because, yes, I may have ordered them, and they shipped, me, they shipped them to me in a wonderful box. It's a bigger company, so their shipping is a little different. But I needed to make sure that I was even going to be able to ship it out to any of you guys should someone order it from me or buy it off of my Etsy page because this will be listed on Etsy once I'm finished today. Um, so I had to hurry up and get online to, to, to see if I could find a box that this would fit in it. And then on top of that, make sure that Etsy didn't charge some crazy, you know, weird amount for shipping. But um, this right here, lengthwise, is 29 inches. It's 12 inches wide. So as long as I'm mindful of where I'm placing things on here, I found boxes on Amazon uh, for 30 by 12 by 12. And then I bought a box resizer so I can get that taken care of. So, um uh, it is a, a fairly thin frame, if you see here. It's literally just some sticks, but it's pretty sturdy. It's not, it's not, if you can see here, these, the sticks they're, they've used, I want to say sticks, it's a grapevine wreath. The stuff they've used here isn't crazy, like, flimsy. If you look here, I can't, it's not bendable. It's not, like, bowing or anything. Um, now, here in Vegas, with my dry climate, um, it'll probably, you know, crack and bend more than normal. If you live in a more humid area, the wood might swell a little bit. Um, not too familiar with how that will work out with you guys in other states with grapevines. I can tell you here in Vegas, my grapevines just dry out, stay crackly. They don't really break or anything like that unless you step on them or something, right? So that's going to be a little exciting. Now this guy um, through their website was only, that's $10. Uh, so $10, eh, it was weird. I liked it. It's different. Um, so depending on what your preference is. Price wouldn't wouldn't really matter. I plan on making this guy just kind of weird and different, and I'm a little excited about it. So what I'm gonna do today with all the Valentine's goodies I have, I've got these little things that I bought at this little boutique out here in Las Vegas called Rodworks. You might live in some places where there's a Rodworks because there's some a few around in other states. Um, but here I bought these last year, guys. I didn't buy them this year. So I bought these last year, and I know Facebook flips everything around, so you guys are probably seeing them backward. This one says true love, this one says kiss me, this one says hug me. And I bought them because they look like the little um, heart candies. They're just, they're, I thought they were really cute. They have a little bit of glitter around the outside, but 
I'm not gonna get too upset about that. So I got these three a couple, um, not a couple years, I got them last year at Rod Works. Um, so I'm just gonna place three of them on here. This is a little one of a kind thing. I think I have another one of these that says hug me. I bought two of those, not sure why. Um, they were about three fifty each. So one of those things where it was a cute little purchase and I'm helping out a, a, a local business, that type of thing. Um, so some of these things might not be so on the um, less expensive end, some of the little, add, uh, little things I'm adding in. But I'm also going to be using a lot of leftovers from other projects. You can see here I got a lot of tulips left over. These are from the pink wreath I made with you guys last week. And I've made some more wreaths, but I got this new light kit coming in I ordered off of Amazon, so I haven't taken any pictures. I know it may seem that I haven't done anything for weeks, so I'm really sorry, guys. I'm still here. I'm still working. I'm still doing things crazy. I'm just waiting for my new light kit to come in so I can take pictures for you. But I've made, I think, about four or five more tulip wreaths, and I listed two on my Etsy shop. Those other two, or the other three or four, will be listed shortly. Um, as soon as I get my light kit, I believe I get my light kit on Tuesday. Um... So I got leftover tulips. Um, of course, you guys know this is a good staple. Ficus leaves. Those little ficus. Here's one left over from something I did. Um, here's a full branch. I don't know how much I'm going to use. So I got some ficus leaves. Um, again, dollar a branch at Hobby Lobby when at all their stuff is 50% off. So that's that's going to be on the cheaper side of your project. These little picks I got. This is flower market. Now I know these are old. These are from last year. So here's some boxwood. Um, these I got on sale. These are Michael's. You got some purple in it. This was white. Got some purple in it. Now all of Michael's spring goodies are out. Um, hi Roseanne. Hi Andrea. Andrea, you're cooking while well, I see you on YouTube. I'm, I'm, this is Facebook right now, but yes, Andrea, I will be on YouTube. After this is done, I'll get it all edited and put up on YouTube. But thank you so much for, for joining me, guys. And watching me on different platforms, I appreciate that. So here's some purple goodies. Here's a white a white little thing. I don't know what this is, but... It's just a stick. I got these last year also, again, clearancing them out. So if you find things on at the end of the season, clearance them out. Because I believe Christmas is still 80% off, guys. So go snag that up real quick right now, too. Because I'm actually going to be using a ribbon that I got at Michael's for a Christmas ribbon that was 80% off I got last week. And I'm going to be using it right now for this Valentine's wreath. So that's, that's really exciting. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Andrea. All right. So, guys, here, this is a big old pretty bush of all the crazy variegated things you can get these at um i got this one at hobby lobby and i don't know if the tag is still in here anywhere this is pro oh here's two extra pieces um this is probably one of the more expensive ones might be 15.99 or 16.99 but again i got it on the week that mom that hobby lobby does their 50 percent off so this bush will go very far uh, in a lot of your a lot of different projects as long as you know, I love to put greenery in a lot of my stuff a lot of my arrangements and wreaths So if you guys make the investment to buy something like this get it during the week at Hobby Lobby when they're doing 50% off and It will go very far for you, and I like that. It's variegated. We've got a really bright fern green We got a little bit darker fern here There's some of whatever this is called this looks like some grape grape leaves in it. It's got a little it's got a little bit of everything, and I really like the bright green in it, which is why I grabbed it because we're going to use some of those pieces today. Um, now this fell out of here, and I know I clipped this off of a different bush. Um, I think I was going to use these at Halloween, and I was going to spray paint them black, and I never did. Yeah, but um, these came off of another bush similar to this. It's a variegated bush. It's very big and fluffy, and I must have just stuck it in there when I was storing it, but. I don't know, we might use these today. These leaves kind of, they're a little bit heart-shaped for Valentine's. See that? That's kind of cute. Kind of see the little heart shape in there on each one of them. We might might use that today. We'll see how it goes. So that's really about it. I got a, a, a couple different greenery. I got um, just some other picks I had from last year that seemed very springy. And also Valentine's, we got white and purple, lavender, and then more greenery. The ficus leaves, can't go wrong with ficus leaves. Leftover tulips, we'll incorporate that in there somehow. And then here's my ribbon selection, guys. And I've got some leftover pieces I've used at a project that kind of failed me. So let's see. I got this ribbon at Kirkland's many, many moons ago. Kirkland's, which is Costco. Costco hasn't had any good ribbon out that I've seen. I wasn't impressed this year with their fall or their Christmas at all. I got this during their spring. This is their spring look here that I bought the one year. Uh, Kirkland's brand at Costco. I must have bought this probably three or four years ago. Remember guys, 
I'm just now focusing on turning this into a business. So my ribbon addiction has run deep for many, many years because why on earth would anyone who doesn't make that many wreaths buy 50 yards <laughs> of ribbon, heart-shaped ribbon? This is only good for a few things, you guys. So apparently, you know, I just, I got excited because I believe, I don't even, I didn't even write the price on this. So I'm guaranteeing this is probably back still around six bucks, five ninety nine or six ninety nine dollars a spool. And that's a really great price. But I bought this. And these hearts are velvety. They have like a little raised velvet look to them. I'll show you closer when we open it up. Um, so that's my two and a half inch, two and a half inch wide. Uh, my other two and a half inch wide, I kind of want to do a little bit of both. I'm going to do a good amount in this wreath this time. And um, this right here is my other two and a half inch. This was also a Kirkland's buy um, many years ago, also spring, but it's two and a half inches wide. Obviously you can see lavender with polka dots. And, um, this was in a project that I, had failed me. I got rid of it. I undid it. It was an Easter wreath that I wasn't too proud of anymore. So I basically dismantled it and I kept everything I could keep out of it. The mesh was kind of a lost cause. So that went into the garbage, but the wreath frame and all the pieces and the little cute goodies and accents on it. And then the ribbons in it. So this was one of the ribbons that was in that wreath. So I have a lot of these cut pieces. They're already dovetailed. And I took them out of the wreath, so you can kind of see there's a small little wrinkle in there. But there's never really a way that you can, I mean, if, it's, if you're able to salvage something off of a different project, then go for it. So I'll look at something and say, you know, I just don't like that anymore. I'm not proud of it. I'm not happy. I don't really want to put that out uh, for me. Like even thinking, well, maybe I'll donate it to a church. But then it's like, why should I donate something that I'm not proud of? I wish to donate something that I'm proud of and that I want other people to enjoy. So I ripped apart a wreath that I didn't like and I got a good amount here. And I'm going to show you guys, these are all cut at a specific length and we're going to use them into in a bow, in this bigger bow I'm going to put on here. So with the dovetails, we're looking at about 13 inches each. So we're going to be using a lot of the fold over method here and we're going to be like, we'll use the word Frankenstein. I'm going to Frankenstein this guy a bow together and it's going to, it's going to turn out great. So there's, the hearts, the red and white hearts, I've got purple lavender that's going to go along with the purple here and my little purple heart here. So you guys, I'm kind of throwing all this stuff together to try to get it to, you know, it'll be cohesive. Sonia, hello from Henderson, Nevada. Well, hi, how you doing? Nice, another local. Um, you spent some money, uh, Sylvia spent some money at Michael's, but I used my 25% and your 60%. Yes, I saw that coupon today. It was very, very, very nice. Uh, Darlene, snowing in northern Illinois. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Enjoying me talking about the nice weather. Yeah. I was complaining the other day, and then I looked at the uh, the uh, the uh, thermostat in my car. said 55 degrees. <laughs> and I thought I was going to die. And then I immediately thought of all you guys and how you've told me to not really want the snow. So, yeah. I think about you guys often. I was joking with my husband. I'm like, yeah, you know, there's, I have lots of people on my Facebook page that tell me... um you know, they're in like negative weather and not to worry about it. And then again, my husband lived in Boston for a little while. So he's been from, he's been in the snow and he tells me the same thing you guys do. <laughs> Sorry, got sidetracked. You know how I do it. Lisa, hello from Ridgeway, Pennsylvania. Nice. And Diane, Pennsylvania also. <laughs> and Letty, it's good to see you again too. Thank you so much. Oh, good Lord. You understand my, oh my gosh, you work at Joanne's. Oh, no way. No way. I would never. My paycheck would just be, you guys keep money and I will take home. Pro there just there would never be a paycheck. It would just be working to take stuff. That's all I would do. <laughs> all right, back to the ribbon, guys. Here's two, two and a half inch options here. This is the guy I just got last weekend at Michael's for 80% off because this is their Christmas goodies. This big old jumble roll they did this year, which I kind of like because... Michaels didn't really have huge spools of ribbon, you know, and you want to get something for a couple projects, you'd have to buy three or four spools. So this was, I forget what their regular price was, but I got this buddy here, 125 feet for $3.39. So that was super exciting. Now it's a white shimmery um, ribbon and it has a really pretty uh, pinkish purpley iridescent to it. And, you know, that's kind of the Christmassy thing where you can think of iridescence with snow and snowflakes, goes with the blues if you want. This is going to be perfect with our purple and pink in the Valentine's Day. So, again, Christmas ribbon, guys, don't use it. Don't think outside the box. It might say, oh, Christmas and have snowflakes all over it, but all you're paying attention to is right here. Don't look at 
marketing, don't look at packaging. Think from where you're coming from here. And when I thought of this, I said, oh my gosh, that's going to be perfect for Valentine's Day coming up. So again, it's got an iridescent to it. So it's not something you're going to use for Valentine. I mean, um, sorry. Um, it's not something you're going to use for 4th of July, for red, white, and blue, because this is iridescent. But this will come in handy for at least a couple more seasons. Or anybody, if you, you might get a, a, a custom order. I was speaking with one of my, um, my, my followers on Facebook, and she got a request for like a Paris-themed type uh, wreath, some, you know, the, the fancy France and the pretty stuff. This white iridescent would look pretty with that too, and some pearls and stuff like that. So try to think outside the box. And if you like it, go ahead and get it, especially if it's 80% off. Can't argue with that, right? So we got the white iridescent. And then these were craft outlet purchases. Uh, this is an old one that I have here. It's a shimmery pink. I used this on a breast cancer wreath I did for charity last year for my work. They asked me to make a couple of wreaths to auction off to raise money for breast cancer awareness when we did a walk last year. I'm sorry, 2016. So I have a decent amount of this left over. Um, I'll try to incorporate this in a little bit. And then this one was a new purchase just maybe like a month ago from Craft, Out Craft Outlet also. So it's that cute little just, it's a canvassy red uh, ribbon with that cute little, I don't know, what is that? Is that called quatrefoil? Is that, is that, am I pronouncing it even correctly? This design, can't say no to this design, right? So these are our our ribbon options and I'm gonna get this guy in there even though it's not a continuous piece we're gonna I'm gonna find a way to get that in there and we'll do that together so we'll uh, we'll work it out together I've done some Frankenstein type stuff before in the past with things and I'll get it to work you guys we'll, we'll get it to work so other than that you'll need your normal clippers I got some white pipe cleaners to put on the back of those hearts um, scissors pipe not pipe I got pipe cleaners, scissors Oh my gosh, wire cutters, anything else like that. So we're ready to get started, y'all. This is, um, again, this is the really big kind of guy. It's a little different of a size, but it's going to lend really pretty. It's also really long, so it covers up more of your door. Like, I'm going to hang this in. I would hang this inside. I wouldn't hang it outside. Um, but that's totally up to you if that's what you choose. But this is going to take up a, a decent amount of room on your door. It's going to be a really nice size. It's going to have a good presence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my bow here down on the second pane. I'm going to call it a pane because it's a window shape design, right? Um, and let's see. Letty, good to see you again. Hello from Ridgeway, Princeton. I got you that. Lisa, Lori, uh, Roanoke, Virginia. Hello, Tanya from Kentucky. And Carol, thanks for joining me. Nice to see you. Okay, so... You guys, I'm going to put some pipe cleaners on the back of these these little hearts because I want to put these on first. I want to get these placed in on there first. So what I'll do is I'm going to put this guy down on the ground here just for a little bit. And I'm going to get pipe cleaners on the backs of these. Now, they have little hangers on them, and I'm not sure that I'm going to keep those on. Um... I'm probably going to just bend the wire back just because there really isn't anything else for me to do with it. I don't need to keep it. There's not really... I don't want to take it off either because then they'll leave little holes on the front. So what I'm going to do is first... I never... I should have did this before I got on the, on the phone. <laughs> before I got on the phone with you guys, which I technically I am on the phone, right? <laughs> um, Oy, I might not be able to get these off. I don't want to leave a bunch of stickers on the back of stuff because you know when you will see these on the backs of of some of it. Okay, that's that's just not going to come off. All right, so in this instance, I'm going to leave these all on the back. That's not something I normally do, but because these were a couple years old, they've been in my storage bins. Now my storage bins have been in my house. I don't keep them in my garage or anything. Oh, yeah, but these guys are really like. Well, that one came off sort of easy. These guys are really on there. They're Apparently, they really didn't want you to miss what the price was when you purchased it, but that's just not coming off very easily. Um, so while I work on these... Hi, Marla. Marla, thank you so much. Beautiful work. Thank you so much. Um, I did something today, which um, I am in a success circle with Julie Samaka of Southern Charm Wreaths. I know you, some of you may be very familiar with her. She's a very talented wreath maker. She's been doing it for a very long time. She's very successful. She's a lovely, lovely lady. Um, and she's very warm, inviting, so on and so forth. So I've been in um, 
um, a, um, a success circle with her. So she's basically a business mentor for me um, and coach. And she has put together a uh, Wreath Makers Convention. It's called Wreath Makers Live. And it's going to be in Fort Worth, Texas. And I bought tickets. And uh, the tickets went on sale today. So it's live. And everyone can join if they want. Um, I bought tickets. I booked my room. I'm going to get my airfare done out of the way pretty soon. And I am absolutely terrified, guys, because I have never traveled anywhere by myself. I have only been on an airplane two times in my entire life. I am 37 years old. I have only flown on a plane twice. Once when I was 13 from Vegas to Reno. Now that's a 40 minute flight, so does that count? Who knows? And then a couple years ago with my husband, we went to Little Rock, Arkansas to go visit his grandma. And then we had to drive like three hours to Cherokee Village, if anybody's familiar with that. But both times, when I was 13, you know, you're a minor, so the, uh, they're not called stewardess anymore. Sorry, guys, I'm old-fashioned. Um, they are uh, flight attendants have to watch you because you're underage, I guess. That was, wasn't, that was a fun experience. But again, 40-minute flight. And then this last time with my husband, he, he travels like crazy. He's been to Africa. He's been all over for his companies that he works for. He's a computer software engineer for a, um, um, on, a radiology or an oncology software company. It's a really big company. So my husband travels all the time, all over the place. He's been out of the country. He stays in the country. He's going everywhere. A couple weeks, he'll be in Georgia. So he's very well traveled. Let's put it that way. I get excited when I see a Walmart or a Payless shoe store or something that somebody else has in their city, in my city, thinking that, oh my God, I can't, is anybody else, <laughs> is anybody else like completely crazy excited when you see stuff like, oh my gosh, they have a McDonald's here. My husband goes, and they have indoor plumbing too. And I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> it's, it's very easy for me to get like super excited over the most mundane things, you guys. So I say, I live a sheltered life. I don't get out of Vegas very often. And all the other places I've been, again, we drove to. I go to California at least once every three months, but that's for medical reasons uh, for me. i got to go to UCLA. But, um, again, I'm used to that, and I actually just I hate that drive anymore. But I used to be just to go to Disneyland. Now, Disneyland, that's a fun drive. So you're about four and a half hours, and then it's over, but not anymore. Uh, but flying somewhere, and I'm going to do this solo. So I get to try to <laughs> navigate all that stuff. Uh, what is it? Find the flight, luggage, all that good stuff. And my husband normally is it. And and it's just, um, oh, thank you, Lori. Hey, hey, Lori, thanks. I'm going to see you there, too. I was so excited. So I will see how it goes because, guys, it's um my first time ever doing any of this stuff. And my husband offered multiple times to come with me and that he would just find something to do while I'm at my conventions. And, you know, because it's two solid days of just a whole bunch of fun with other fellow people that that are in our industry that we have you know I can learn a lot from a lot more people and he offered to come and I said you know I need to, this is a sign I think it's time for me to try to do something on my own so and he agrees he's like you got this you'll be fine and I, I know it's just terrifying <laughs> it'll be terrifying and I'll be in Houston Texas or not Houston I'm sorry Houston, it's Dallas Fort Worth I don't know why I keep saying that but um Angie, hi from Alabama. And I sometimes go over stickers with a quick coat of paint or markers. That's a good idea, Diane, just to hide them up. Yeah. Uh, and no, you didn't miss much. You didn't miss much. Let's see. What else have we got here? So I'm going to Texas, guys, in June. It's, at the, it's in the middle of June. So it's going to cost a pretty penny. You know, it's a, it's a decent amount. Airfare, got to do hotel. I'm not going to do a rental car. I'm probably going to do like a super shuttle or something. I think that's going to be like maybe 25 or 40 bucks a trip. Not bad. It is what it is. Um, so it's going to be a pretty penny. So I need you guys to help share my page. If you can, please share my video, share my page, get my Etsy shop some, some, some love. Get us, get me a little bit of notice out there. See how things go. Oh, where'd my, I need my stapler. I'm just talking, you guys. Talk, talk, talk. You know me. Um, Vicky, you'll have a blast. It will be so fun meeting everyone face to face. Yes, I agree. I agree. Andrea, oh, we want to go. Perfect. <laughs> um, I flew for the first time ever in eight years ago. I'm finally comfortable with it. Yeah, I mean, I was okay on the two flights. I mean, obviously when I was 13, I honestly can't remember. I was like 1993. Couldn't remember. 
But just a few years ago, I want to say maybe three or four years ago, we went to Arkansas. Um, my husband and my father-in-law came too, so we went to go see uh, his mother, my, my, my husband's grandmother. Um, he is a retired Navy pilot. So airplane travel is not exactly exhilarating for this man. He used to fly fighter planes. He used to do all kinds of stuff. And then he was an instructor. So <laughs> airplane travel for him is very mundane. It's very, yeah, what it is. He's asleep in like five seconds. And I'm over there looking out the window, taking pictures of the people, putting lug luggage in the plane. Like it's, again, it's something I've never seen. I think I was the most excited person on that entire Southwest flight. And everybody was wondering, why the hell is she so happy? Why is she smiling so much? I'm like, because I've never done this, you guys. This is so awesome. And then 20 minutes into the flight, I'm like, oh, that person's kind of coughing really close to, oh, okay. Hmm. Let me put my earphones in. You know? <laughs> I still, it's still fun to do it. It's just terrifying to think about doing it by myself for the first time. Because, you know, my husband's done it so much, you have that, you kind of get that, uh, comfortableness of knowing, oh, I'm with someone. If something should go wrong, he'll know what to do or they'll know what to do. So now at this point, it's just, I'm going to have to hopefully depend that the people that are there are going to be able to help me. And I, 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 you know, the majority of people in the world are honest and nice. The majority of people you run into aren't going to be horrible. Now, granted, there are some, there are some crazy people out there and you got to be careful, right? But especially here in Las Vegas, you'd think that it's kind of a different, in my opinion, I've never lived anywhere else, so that's why I always say I want to move out of Vegas, but right when you really need it, the people here in the community, people are nice. They'll, they'll get you where you need to go, so I just said, have faith, say some prayers, and I'll be okay, guys, right? Now I need to stress about paying for it. <laughs> so you guys, I need you to help blow up my Etsy shop. Um... I will get things listed. I'm going to be focusing more and more and more on this. Um, um, obviously still have my 40 hour job. So as much as I can during the day, I will be constantly thinking about being in here. And then when I come home, I will definitely be in my craft room. So you guys might see some more lives from me, not necessarily instructional stuff or DIY where I show you all my tips, but if you guys just want to hang out and chat with me while I make some things or while I finish some things or hopefully my goal would be to get some orders if someone orders something I can help make I can make that online you guys can chat with me the more lives I do I'm sure the more you guys would maybe just want to sit and watch not sure if that's interesting or not but I like watching other people so you never know I'm gonna show you real quick what I did here so on the back of these little wooden hearts I took a pipe cleaner and I cut it in half and then I stapled it in two spots with my little staple gun and then you put glue on top of that so now you're seeing that there's the little the tags on the back I wasn't able to get off. Um, now on the back of my wreath, you guys know from other videos, you'll see I, um, words. I just, I'm, I'm excited and I drew a blank, you guys. Wow. Um, <laughs> I, again, completely lost it. What was I saying? Wow. So anyways, I put, um, the tags, I had to leave the tags on the back. So, oh, that's what I was saying. On the back of my wreaths, I will place more greenery on the back to hide these. Because this is a bright white little thing you're going to see uh, through the through the, the middle, uh, through the back of the grapevine. So once we tw twist tie these things together, we'll put some greenery back there, some more leaves, things that you can't see. It also protects your door, your window, if, should you see the back of it. I like things to look pretty all over. Um, and then also to protect whatever they're going to be laying against. Because you don't want to scratch your door, scratch paint, scratch windows, stuff like that. So that's what it looks like. Underneath that glue, you can kind of see there's just some staples in there. Might be able to see here on the pink one. So you've got two staples each and then a dollop of hot glue on each. They're all dried up now. And there's glitter. Guys, there's glitter on everything. It's driving me up a wall. I have to not try to clean so much while I'm doing this. So first I'm going to do is I'm going to put these guys on and then we're going to do the bow. I don't really have a, a set form of the way I do things, but we'll see. And I was I started cutting the I started cutting the ficus leaves apart while I was talking to you guys, so I've got a little scatterbrain there. So let's see how it goes. I know I want to place these in three different positions, in three different sides. So I'm trying to see, I guys, I got you as far back as I think I can possibly get you in a decent area, so you can see as much of this project as possible. So if I work on it kind of this way, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave some of it hanging off. I know what I want to do is I want to place 
a few of these. I think I might just leave that wire piece up. I'm not sure. I do. I want to put the bow here. So when you hang this on the wall, the bow will be here in the middle of this. I still want you to be able to see the, the crisscross pattern of this window pane. So I'm going to put the bow here in this middle piece, not up here at the top corners. Um, the wreath will probably be hung here or hung here is my idea to hang on your wall or your door. So I'm going to put my bow in here. So I am going to put a, a heart up here in this top right corner or top left corner. But I think I'm going to put the purple one down at the bottom. So I think I'll start with... Again, there's no rhyme or reason, guys. I'm just kind of attacking this to see... I'm just going to attack it with... Uh, you know, your, your, use your creative mind, figure out things. And then you can also always just move them around and place them in different places. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the red at the top. I'm going to put my bow here, so I'll put pink here, and then I'll put purple down here at the very bottom. That seems to be looking cute to me. If you guys can kind of see here, there's the red one, pink and purple. So I figured the three here, I like to do things in odd numbers. You don't always have to, there's no rules you have to abide by, trust me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna twist tie these in, nothing says they're permanent just yet. Um, once you glue them, that's when you know there's no, no turning back. So what I'm gonna do is get this attached in a way, there we go. So what I've done is I've just placed this heart on the top of my wreath the way I want it to face, kind of a little bit diagonally in. And then I'm going to flip it over. Oh, I just lost my purple one. I got it. Okay. I'm going to flip it over here, and I'm going to use my twist ties. And I'm just going to twist this maybe two, three times here. Uh, now at the end, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's not super glue. I'm going to hot glue a lot of this down, so that way it's not going anywhere. But it's not going to fall off now, because that pipe cleaner is pretty strong. I've twisted it five or six times. Um, there's not really much to worry about when it comes to that. This is wired on. So here I think I said I wanted to do my bow here. I'm going to do the pink one here in the middle. And I, I always end up doing things kind of at a diagonal. And the purple one here, no, I just I kind of want this one more, more here on this side. So let's do that there. Okay. So just holding it on the front, flip it over, and then start using those twist ties. That's not gonna go anywhere. Same thing now with my purple one, and then we'll get started on the bow. Now that's twisting a little bit too much for me. I don't want it to twist so much. Now after you've glued things in, if you still have some stuff moving around, glue it some more. Because obviously when your glue's like super hot, it's it's not going to you're going to get movement. So I'm going to lay that flat for a minute. Let it kind of cool off. My glue gun, my new glue gun I got on Amazon a little while ago, showed you guys last time. Um, it has two settings, 60 watt and 100 watt. And I've never put it on 100 watt yet, but 60 watt gets really hot. So if I ever need the 100 watt, I'm sure it'll just melt through the floor into the foundation of the house. It's kind of crazy hot. How are we doing over here, guys? Let's see. Oh, Lisa Day has a new craft shop in Du Bois, Du Bois, Du Bois, Pennsylvania. It's called Pat Catans. The website is patcatans.com. You guys take a look at that. If you find things you like, okay, so she sells supplies and get things shipped to you. Okay, I'll take a peek at it. Everybody else take a peek at, at uh, Lisa's website. It's kind of cool. Um, Beverly, nice. Andrea, I want to go. Vicky, you have, you will have a blast. It will be fun meeting everyone face to face. Okay, how many of you guys are going to come? You guys are all going to come to the same thing? That'd be kind of awesome. Uh, thank you, Margaret. I like, I love that you're here. Thank you for loving my work. Whitney, you have to go. You have to go company. Oh, that's okay, Roseanne. That's okay. Yeah, definitely catch the replay. No problem. Um, Nancy Black, not a problem. We are just starting. It's not a problem. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, Johnny, we're, I'm definitely going to be covering up my twi my tags and twists. Uh, and Kate Day, the, the, this actual wreath came from Carolina Pottery. I had them uh, deliver it to me 
I had to, because I, I don't live in any of the states where they are, and this isn't available on their website. So I made some comments and some inquiries on their Facebook page, and they sent me to an e-commerce person that set up a way for me to purchase them online and have them shipped to me. So never worry, guys. There's probably always a way you can get something somehow delivered to you if you want it. So you know, I always say the worst thing that can happen is they say no. That's, I love to say it. My friends and my family know the first thing I say is, what are they going to do? You can't take away your birthday, <laughs> right? Some people might not want that birthday. Like I say, I don't mind the birthday celebration, but can we stop that number? You know, I'm good with the number thing. But um, the worst thing that can happen is they'll say no. And then you go on with life. So I was like, you know what? Let me just find out. Let me see here. All I did, guys, was I changed the, the direction of this. I had it facing the same way as this pink one. This one facing this way and this one, so I kind of wanted this one to go opposite, so it's the same as the red one at the top. You can see that. So I just changed the direction. Here's what I did while I'm talking. So um, pot, South Sarah, oh my God, Carolina Pottery um, had me leave my information, contact information there. And then what happened was their, what they call e-commerce person contacted me, which is a manager in one of their shops, and set up li links for me to purchase the, what I needed. So um, they set up a link. I purchased the reeds. I got this one, and then I also got a square one with the same uh, diagonal directional window pane design in it, and they're super cute because I have never seen anything like that out here. Um, and I ordered a, a decent amount of them. I got six of these and four of the other ones, and they got to my house. When you guys saw, I posted on Facebook when I got that picture. I, I just unloaded them, so I couldn't wait to uh, get one in here and attack it. All right, guys, so there we go. None of these are coming off. You see that there? They're all on pretty good. And again, we're going to cover the back up with leaves, so don't worry if it kind of looks icky right now. We're going to wait till the end to make sure we get it all done in one go. So now, what we're going to do is, I'm going to kind of push some of this stuff over here off to the side, get some of the greenery out of the way. I'm not sure if I'm going to use these or not. It's always part of the, the fun. I don't want to cover up too much of the wreath. This is the one where I say don't worry about covering it up, but I don't want to cover this up because this one is it's just so cute and it's different. So I'm going to leave that as is. So put my pipe cleaners over here and let's start getting all of this ribbon kind of opened, dovetailed, and ready to go. Now all these extra little pieces here, I'm going to keep up here off to the side. And let's see here. Uh, Kimber, same thing frame. Missed you. Glad to see you live. Hi, Debbie. Thanks. I missed you too, guys. That's so nice. Um, what else have we got here? Um, let's see. Mary Black, love your top. Thanks, Mary. This is ancient. <laughs> I've had this shirt for many, many moons. And it's actually... Okay, again, guys, I'm going to complain about it being cold here. And I know y'all are in some places that... <laughs> That you're talking about snow and negative this and things are freezing and my heart goes out to you i still want to go play in snow i don't you know, I have to have my own experiences guy guys uh, but again it's kind of cold <laughs> in my craft room and we got our heat on in the house still but it got cold so i said let me put on something long sleeve and yes i may be of the uh group that i actually plan my outfit for what i plan on making for you guys so FYI, I wore pink because it kind of reminds... Wow, this is just not opening for me, seriously. Um, I planned on wearing pink because I was going to do Valentine's Day. But yeah, I've had this guy for a long time. And I don't normally wear long sleeve stuff. I usually always was so so hot all the time, but... I've had some uh, recent changes in my life and I'm no longer hot and sweaty anymore. Just, I don't know if you guys needed to know all that. I might be oversharing. <laughs> you gotta let me know. <laughs> oh, geez, Whitney. Oh, Auntie Crick. Hey, that's my friend from childhood. How are you doing, girl? She lives in Hawaii. Miss you, sis. Yeah, miss you too, girl. Miss you too. Someday I'll get out there. Trust me, someday. I'm planning on it. I'll get to Hawaii. <clears throat> um, oh my gosh, Lorianne, you are only 25 minutes from a... Oh my God, I'm so jealous. I've got the cutest stuff. 
cutest stuff. It's just a little bit different, and it's just you know one of those things where you kind of like the variety. I've got Michaels, Joann's, and Hobby Lobby here, and I I basically go to Hobby Lobby and Michaels all the time. Uh, Joann's is from is off and on time to time when they give really good sales, and then I go, oh, you know what? This has some really cute stuff in here. I should come more often, but that too can become dangerous. So, um, but Carolina Pottery, the stuff that I see, I follow them on Instagram. And of course, Facebook. So Carolina Pottery, they put out a lot of cute videos and ideas. And then the stuff that I see all you guys make online that live in those states, you guys make some really cute stuff. It's easy to uh, get a little jealous. But uh, Carolina Pottery is very accommodating. Again, like I told you, I set all that stuff up online and I had it shipped to me. I got it in like three days. So from South Carolina to Las Vegas, Nevada, it took three days. And of course, because I spent over $100, I got it for free. So I didn't have to pay for shipping. Because, I mean, if you look at it, the cost of shipping was about equal to the price of a wreath. So I might as well just buy another wreath and then get free shipping. Uh, guys, I'm just dovetailing the ends of everything right here, starting things out, just getting things ready for when I'm, I'm starting to pull all this together. That's all I'm doing. I always get the first end done. And then that way, once my wreath is on, or once my bow is on my wreath, all I have to do is just cut the second ends. Uh, and there's been times where I've forgotten to do that. I'll catch myself in things later. Um, and then if you're not familiar with dovetail, dovetail is take your ribbon, fold it in half, and then cut from your folded edge diagonally up towards the wired edge. And then that's how you get a dovetail. And again, you'll see me do that like five more times, or 50, or 100, who knows. So I've got all my ribbon ready to go, guys. So here we are. We're going to start with um, loops and pinching and twisting. That's really all some of these bows are. Um, uh, Marquita, you just turned in. Cool shape of the wreath you're working on. Yes, it is different, which is why I picked it. It's a rectangle grapevine window pane design from uh, Carolina Pottery. Um, let's see. Lisa Day, a military wreath. My son's in the army. He did seven and a half years and still going in the reserves. His name is Jesse. He is only 26 years old. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for your support and your sacrifice. And then also thank your son for his service because I have a special place in my heart for veterans. I'm getting teared up. I'm one of those people that as soon as I hear like anything patriotic, I cry. <laughs> I've just, I've grown up that way. My dad was, um, my dad was, um, an electrician in the uh, Air Force. My father-in-law is a Navy pilot, a retired Navy pilot, fighter pilot. My grandpa was in, geez, I'd have to, oh, my grandpa was in the service too, my mom's dad. We had lots of service in our family, lots of, lots of good stuff. So again, thank you for all that, I appreciate it. Beverly, we have a Hobby Lobby and a Joanne. It's very frustrating that we have no Carol Pondery or Michaels. I do order online, but it's not the same. Oh, I agree. It's not the same. I would love to walk through those stores. I spent three hours at Hobby Lobby the other night after work, and I figured I wouldn't be there that long because my feet already hurt, and I just wanted to get home. I had to make dinner. I needed to feed my dogs. Well, my husband got home from work first. He took care of the dogs. I didn't get home till closer to 8 o'clock. <laughs> so we had a late dinner that night, and I didn't even realize how long I was there because they have so much cute stuff out now, right guys? Just the cutest stuff out at Hobby Lobby. Lots of farmhouse decor, lots of cute spring stuff, Easter and all that. It's, it's all, they're putting more and more out. So if you got a Hobby Lobby, I agree. I would love to walk through a Carolina Pottery. I'd probably be there for a few, well, more than a few hours. I'd probably be there for five, go take a lunch break, come back. <laughs> There's a veteran here. Thank you for thinking of us. Yes, Gwendolyn, obviously. Thank you so much for everybody. I appreciate that because it's not just it's not just the veterans serving, the families serve at the same time too. It affects everybody. Everybody has to everybody has to support it and go through it, especially when one person makes a decision to to make that sacrifice for for all of us. Okay guys, so the last um, video I had I put on my YouTube page and one of my YouTube subscribers had asked for me to show a little bit more slowly how I do my bows. So if you guys have been through this, please bear with me. I'm just gonna show a lot of the pinching, twisting, kind of more up close on how I get the bow done, and then we'll get going from there. But that's just a couple people on YouTube wanted to see a bow. Um, I know I'm going to do a pro bow. I have my pro bow set up over here. I'm going to do a separate video for that very shortly. Again, it's just timing, you guys. I'm really sorry. I make all these, 
you know, these, these suggestions, and then I just can't get to them until the weekend. So, um, but I am off tomorrow. Tomorrow is Martin Luther King Day, so I don't go to work. My husband does, but my company lets me off. So I might, maybe I'll do a probo tomorrow for a different Valentine's wreath. We'll see. Um, so this right here, you guys, this is what I call my lazy bow. You could call it a sloppy bow. Um, but just use it, use those words lovingly. Let's not use them derogatory because lazy and sloppy, eh, but this is a bow. So kind of, there you go. It's kind of, it's just the, the, to me, it's the easiest way to do a hand tied bow. There's not a lot to it. There's a lot of different ribbon I got here, but it, it's really super simple guys. So everything I'm leaving here, I leave it on the actual spool as I make it, right? Um, so we're going to pull off a little bit here. I'm going to, I'm just going to guess that I want my tail about, about that long. There's no measurements involved. I don't measure a lot of stuff. If you want to know for specifics, I'll give you this from where I dovetail to where I'm pinching. That's six inches. So I'm just gathering it with a pinch. I just take the ribbon and gather it in a pinch here. So I'm now holding ribbon pinched in my hand, still connected to the spool, right? So here I'm just going to guess on where I want to make, how big I want to make my loop, because I'm going to place this right here on this wreath. So remember, this is my two and a half inch ribbon. I used my bigger ribbons in the back and the smaller ribbons in the front. So the next was we're going to use now. Again, this is a little unorthodox, you guys, because I'm going to be using these scraps. Um, so here's this pinched, right? So because this is a single-sided ribbon, you can see here, the front has a very velvety texture on it, and the back does not. You can see through it, but you don't want to see that in your bow. So you have to take the piece you're pinching here and twist it so that it's facing you. Because you're gonna, when you're facing, this bow faces you, this is the way it's going to face onto your project when you place it onto what you're making. So by me taking it and twisting it on the back, while it's facing me, I've twisted it. I now have the front facing me. And I'm going to go ahead and make another loop here. And I'm just eyeballing it. Okay, more off here. I'm eyeballing it to make it the same size as this loop that I first made. So I'm just going to grab enough here and kind of pinch it and hold it back here and see if that's about the same size. And it looks a little small, so I'm just going to let go of it, make it a little bit bigger. Right? Do you see what I'm doing? I let go, made it a little bit bigger. See here? Again, it's a little bit too small. And again, all I'm doing is eyeballing it. I'm not measuring anything, guys. You don't have to measure it. If you're not comfortable or if you're kind of not experienced in this, um, nothing is an exact science. And if you have a lopsided bow, it will be beautiful. There's no way to worry. Don't. There's no reason to worry or stress about it because nothing is perfect. None of us are perfect. There's nothing perfect, right? There's only one perfect person. And the only thing I believe is identical are butterfly wings, if I'm right. If you guys can help me with that. Everything. There's nothing that's exactly the same on both sides except butterfly wings. So let's go with that and say, look, we're not create. We can't recreate butterfly wings. Those are only created by God. So we're just going to sit here and think if it's lopsided, it is. Now, I can guarantee you that's probably not the same size if you're making it flat. I'm kind of pulling my finger and making it flat, but it's close enough. So from there, I just left these two loops here, and I'm going to cut this tail. I'm just guessing, but I don't want these tails to be very long in the middle. So I'm going to cut this one just a little bit short here, and then I'll dovetail that one at the end. So I'm going to leave this up here this way, and this goes this way. And then we're going to move on to the next ribbon. Now you're going to do the same thing repeated all around because I'm only doing two loops for every ribbon. I've got one, two, three, four, five ribbons, right? Now here's where the special comes in because this is leftover from a Chris or an Easter wreath I made last year that I absolutely just was not proud of. So I took it apart and I was able to salvage all the stuff off of it except for the mesh. And that was just part of a chalk it up to your own experience slash training slash, you know, practice makes perfect. The mesh was very inexpensive. I got it at craftoutlet.com, which again, craftoutlet.com has very affordable mesh. You're only looking at maybe two to three dollars worth of waste. And it was something that you just kind of have to go through as a creator and designer. Everybody comes across it. So this uh, were, was streamers inside of that wreath. I saved it all. So what I'm going to do on this one is 
This is going to be unorthodox. This is not going to look normal. I'm going to take this dovetail end and I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to make it I'm going to make this into a loop this way because these pieces, let me say, I think I measured them before I just dropped that one. I measured it before these, okay, well that one was 13 inches and this is about 15 inches. So what I'm going to do here in the middle is I'm just going to turn this one into one loop and because it's faced that way, I'm going to kind of pinch it here like this, place this one on top of my hand going this way. Right, so it's going to get a little bulky here in the middle, but that's fine because things will cover it up. And then I'm going to take another one, fold it in half, and place it going the opposite way, sort of like you would if you had a normal, uh, if it was still connected on the spool. Uh, again, nothing is going to be perfect. We're just going to gather that, place that in here too. So now I have a loop going this way, I've got a loop going this way. And then now I can take one of these longer ones and I'm literally going to pinch it in the middle just like it was originally in, um, it has all the creases. You guys can kind of see the creases in it here. Can you see those creases? I don't know if it's showing up. That's where it was tied into my mesh wreath at. So I'm just pinching it back in the middle again and I'm going to lay that right on top of these. So that's how I'm Frankenstein. That's how I call it. I'm just piecing this back into the wreath or into a bow so that I'm not wasting these pieces. I don't want them to go to waste and I don't want to have to worry about, okay, I'm gonna let them sit here. Plus, this isn't easy to store with all my ribbon on the wall over there. It's kind of a little frustrating because it constantly falls. Not me dropping it, I mean, it falls off of my storage area over there. So that's how I pieced in this piece. Now, right now I got a lot to hold on to. So there's no, no harm in making your bow in stages. I like to say if your hand starts to cramp up or it's just too much to hold, wrap some wire, chenille stem, pipe cleaner, whatever you got, whatever you're using, zip tie, there's never a problem with that. So I'm going to do my chenille stem around these two guys here because it's getting kind of thick to hold and my thumb is getting a little tired on me. So all I'm doing is twisting this twist tie or this zip tie, I literally just wrapped it around the middle of everything I did here, right? So here's the twist tie. Now we're still putting ribbon on top of this guy. This bow is, guys, this bow isn't done yet. So let me show you here. There's that one. So we're gonna kind of leave this. This looks a little crazy and sloppy, I know, but we're gonna leave it that way. We want it this way. Off to the side. Okay, so we're not done with this, but I'm gonna be able to place it down because my hands are getting tired, right? So I have three sets here of the one and a half inch ribbon that I wanna use in the middle of this guy. So I'm going to start with the one that I want to kind of be more of an accent. So do I want to do red, white, and then pink? This one is more shiny and iridescent. I'm going to put this one on the back of it. So what I'm going to do is start out the exact same way I did with the two and a half inch ribbon. And we're going to grab the one and a half inch ribbon here. And I'm going to kind of take my original bow and I'm going to guesstimate because I don't want these loops to be the same size. I kind of want to be a little bit smaller. So that's about how big I want it. So this actually doesn't have a, a right and a wrong side. If you look here, it looks about the same. Um, the only thing you can, it actually kind of is exactly the same. Yeah, you don't have to twist this type of ribbon. So what I'm gonna do is I have to, I lost my ribbon, my, my, my there we go, my loop size. Grab it, twist it, pinch it. And there is no twisting involved on this one because this ribbon is double-sided. So I'm just, I twisted it, I'm pinching it, I want to grab it and make another loop and pinch it. That's it. So if you're able to buy ribbon that it doesn't have a right and wrong side, there's no twisting involved and that might help you with any kind of like confusion or beginner's uh, doubt, that type of thing. Never a problem. And it looks like they have a little bit of a weird like I'll have to cut that out. So actually that, that worked out pretty good. That's probably where the manufacturer kind of left off and had to add a new piece in. So just cut that out. All right, so we're done with that one. I'm gonna go into this pretty red one here. Same thing, I'm still holding where this is. Now this is, is not double-sided, see guys? There's the front, really pretty pattern, and then there's the back. So we're gonna have to twist this one. So what I'm gonna do is I lay it on top here of where I want it. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have, no, I'm, not. I'm gonna leave it the same way. I don't wanna confuse you guys. So hold it on top, 
I pinch it, I make my loop. I'm holding it next to it actually is what I'm doing. Pinch that in, twist it, make my second loop, pull that into my fingers where I'm twisting everything else and pinch that, twist that last one so the tail faces you forward. Is any of this looking like you guys or can see? Lisa, yes, please, thank you, and your son. Okay, good, perfect, thank you. And Letty, your husband's a Navy veteran. Thank you so much, and thank you, thank him for his service. And before cell phones, I was paged at Michael's. It was my husband. He had gone three hours. <laughs> That's awesome. Your husband to page you. <laughs> That's something my husband would do anyways, even though he has a cell phone. He'd be like, excuse me. I've lost my wife. Can you please page her to the front of the store? Kind of like when I was little at Kmart and I used to run off and my mom would have to, or I would lose my mom and I'd go to customer service and hand it off to my mom. My husband would do that today. Doesn't matter. We got cell phones. That's kind of awesome, which I hope, you know, he watches these. So don't get any ideas, Kurt, just so you know, don't be paging me at the craft stores. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you so much, Whitney. How much to see if you can do a military wreath one? How much will it be? Oh, Lisa, um, if you want me to make a custom wreath for you, I would love to do that. Um, I just need to know some other things. So um, either direct message me on this page or through Etsy, and I can figure something out, and I will get a uh, estimate out uh, just to see exactly what you want. And then I also have to research and find out where to get certain things. So if you guys want any type of custom work, I absolutely am willing and would love to do it. So again, I need to pay for my trip coming up in June. So whatever you guys want, I'm here for you. I would love to help. So I don't have an idea of how much it would cost, um, Lisa, but just contact me and we'll work something out together. And then I'll give you some estimates to see if it's something you still like or would still want to go through with. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so Barbara and Paula, everybody, you guys so far can see I got one more to go. So I'm going to do this one really slow and then we'll get to, we'll get to putting it on here and in the greenery and we're done. So, of course, I say like that's like that's going to be like five minutes, but with the way I talk, who knows how long that'll, who knows how long that will last, right? So, last one here. This is more or less the ribbon kind of goes next to it, but once I'm done, you can kind of separate your piece out and lay it on top of what you're holding. So, the next one I have now, I'm already holding two here. I got this one here. I'm going to guesstimate about the same length ribbon, and this one here looks like it is double-sided but it's not this front part has more of like a tinsel I don't know if I can even pick that up on camera there's sort of you can't pick it up on camera there's a tinsel type uh, stripe going through this ribbon that you can really see it's a little shiny and on the back of it it's not there so this one we're gonna have to do the twisting so I'm gonna have my my tail right here and I'm gonna place that next to it and I'm just re feeding it in and I'm pinching it here right so now I'm pinching it. I've got my other bow loops here to guesstimate by. So you take your ribbon and you kind of use your finger in your hand like this and you can see how big your loop is going to be. You can make it bigger or shorter with your hand here to adjust. Okay. I'm going to take that a little bit bigger, push that in here, grab it with my thumb. So I'm grabbing it now with my thumb and pinch that in. You're just, you could try to pull it in with your fingers if they're full I'm you're basically you're just stuffing the ribbon into your hand that's all you're really doing all right so now we have to twist this to face the front face you to have the front facing you and then of course your spool down here is going to get all twisted that's normal and of course you're not going to be doing this holding this up for anyone you'll be holding it and looking at it yourself so you won't be uncomfortable It'll just be a little difficult your first try, not a problem. There's always the back end way of trying to do one at a time, and I use clothespins to hold them. So if your hands start to hurt, I previously have had carpal tunnel surgeries on both of my hands back when I used to work with money. Um, I, I worked in the banking industry for a long time, so these have saved me a lot. The Probo is an awesome product if you have arthritis or carpal tunnel or issues like that. Right now, I'm not using a lot of force. You don't have to hold really, really tightly. You're just holding, you're just putting enough pressure in there just to hold it so you're not dropping anything. Twisting this guy, same thing here, I untwisted some more of this. Same thing, you're going to bring it down and kind of guesstimate here. So I'm just bringing it back up. So I brought it down, bringing it back up, and I'm judging this loop 
from these two previous loops I made. So your first one you make, you're just going to guesstimate your first loop and then try to eyeball it. And then from there you have other loops on the same side to eyeball that loop that you're making right now. Bring that up, pinch it, twist it so the front faces you, and then cut off however long you think you need your tail. Um, now these tails are fixable. If you make them longer, then you can always cut off what you don't need. If you make them shorter, you might not be able to fix that other than adding one, a fake tail in, which is not hard either. You would just cut a strip and um, use a pipe cleaner and kind of feed it in there where you want it. Or you could even hot glue it because I've gotten away with that too. You, you can't, can't ever really make a huge mistake. It's really easy. Which I'm going to be doing that with a couple of these two in different areas because I'm going to add a couple different one loop bows. So there's the end of that one. Now what I'm going to do is place it on top of the middle of this little beautiful mess of all of this stuff we did earlier. So here I'm going to push this down on top of here. And I'm not going to use the existing zip tie, or um, not zip tie, the existing pipe cleaner we had. I'm going to use a new one. And still putting it down in the middle as though this was my original whole piece. So I'm, I'm not changing the bottom one. I'm leaving it on. And then I'm wrapping it around the whole project here. So now you can see my zip ties holding all that goody stuff together. All those good... Oh, look what happened, guys. This is why we do live, so you can see how to fix this. So apparently, I must have let go. All right, so what I'm going to do here is... You can see the pinch mark where I'd made it before it dropped, right? So I'm going to grab that pinch mark back where it was. And I'm going to feed that back into this side here. So if you see... I don't know if you guys can even see that. Here's my pinch mark, right? There's my thumb. So I'm pinching it back to, again, and I'm just feeding it back up, and I'm holding it back under with my thumb. Just kind of put it on the side. You don't got to get it under. You don't got to get it in. Just put it up on the side, and then put your zip tie back over. Or your, I keep saying zip tie, guys. Sorry. Your pipe cleaner. Just put your pipe cleaner back over it right there. And then now you've got one beautiful, little sloppy, beautiful mess of bow the ribbon. It's really pretty. So I got a little bit of everything in there. Five ribbons might be too much for you. That's fine. Use four, use three, or use all the same color. I like to use all kinds of stuff. So if your preference is to maybe use a little bit less of one, have at it. Take it. It's it's basically it's it's your um it's your idea, it's it's your trip. You make it what you want it to be. Whatever makes you happy is what I like to say. So, and look at me, I'm actually fixing it and I should stop. Okay. <laughs> so here now, I'm holding it, I'm pulling it all forward, and I'm going to twist this guy really tight here. And then all I'm doing is holding the bow. I'm twisting the twist tie, the chenille stem, I should say. I'm twisting that. So here's my previous one from the two bigger ones I made before, and here's the big one with everything together. So at a certain point, I'm going to take these and twist them together. You see that? They're both there together, so I'm going to take those two and twist those together. That's really about all you need to do. And don't mess with it. Don't fluff it. You've got a lot of wire here holding it all together. It's not going to come apart. I'm going to attach it to my wreath right now. And then we'll start kind of playing with it after I have it on here just to see how things are going. But since I have two sets, I'm going to leave these sets together. And I'm going to feed this set in one side and this set in another uh, between this um, X part here, the little crisscross pattern here on the wreath. Um, and we're going to we're going to see here how it works to get this guy attached. You want to put it around uh, one of the really bigger parts of the wreath so it has a good amount of support when you're attaching it down. Yeah. So okay. So now I have that here. You're going to flip it over, and it might seem kind of bad. Don't ever do it, but you have to. you got to work on the back of it. If you smush the wreath or the bow, that's okay. That's part of working on it. I'm kind of holding this up so I don't. Um, but I also want to make sure that I get enough of this into so it's not hanging off the front. I want it to be pretty secure to the, to the wreath itself, to the form. Because um, we're going to put greenery and, and some goodies and stuff behind here. So I'm just twisting the two together. And I'm not taking this bow off. I'm not relocating it. This guy is in where he's going to be. So now, after I've twisted a lot of that together, I'm going to cut off all the excess. And then take that little piece that I have here. Here's where I've twisted them together around the back. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to curl that back in on itself. 
Now remember, we're going to cover up this back, the back of this, we're going to cover it up with uh, leaves and different type of greeneries so you don't see any of this. So after you're done, you could even put hot glue all over that pipe cleaner and you're it, just for added security, added, um, added, uh, added, pe added peace of mind, I could say. If you're worried that your piece might fall apart, you have to worry about that now. So here where you can kind of sort of play with things a little bit, grab a loop, grab a tail, move one one way or the other, kind of stretch things out a little bit one way or the other. Uh, I like to take opposite sides. So if I have my heart ribbon on this side coming down on the front, on the top side, I want it to go the opposite way. So loop and tail this way and then loop and tail that way it kind of makes it a little bit opposite of itself, sort of, sort of, kind of. And then you guys know I, I like to add a lot of stuff into my bows. So I will be putting greenery in here and some of those cute little uh, boxwood with the, with the purple, you know, those types of things. So just kind of getting an idea of how this is going to play out on here. Don't be afraid to tug and move things around. You've got a really good... Um, you've got a really good seal on it or twist ties your twist your twist ties you guys words just aren't coming to me today it must be it must be the 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 excited nervousness of knowing that i i made a step today with that that trip i'm gonna take so sorry guys if i'm a little bit more scatterbrained than than normal because you guys already know i'm kind of scatterbrained right so all i've done is just kind of played with it a little bit added things here and there so now um, don't put your ribbon away yet because we're going to pick a few of these later and we're just going to do like a one loop bow here or here just to tie in more ribbon around the pieces for the other guys. So, so far this is all we got. We got a bow and three little hearts. If you guys can see the little hearts. And then here to the bow and three little hearts. So that's, that's basically what we're working with at the moment. And it's only been, how long has it been guys? An hour. <laughs> an hour yeah what can I say all right guys so greenery um I, I started cutting up some of these uh fern not fern oh ficus leaves um on the ficus the little ficus pick you can get at Hobby Lobby um these oops there we go let go let go this is what they look like at Hobby Lobby now granted it has this third one here they're $1.99 but you go every other week and you get these 50% off for 99 cents and they go far um so greenery here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use these because I don't want to cover up too much of this. And I don't want too much sticking out on the sides. Just because I knew that the box that I bought, the boxes I bought on Amazon, I don't know if there's going to be much room to, for leeway. So I want to try to keep this sort of compact because I do uh, hope to sell this to someone, you guys, on Etsy. So I'm going to need to make sure I can fit it in my box, the boxes I ordered. So here's my extra tulips, my greenery, a few pieces of fern. Um, I got to cut off on this humongous bush here, but I want to put the greenery in first. I want to put greenery at the bottom, make it my base, and then I'll put some of these tulips on top of that here and there. And it's just as an accent. I really want the frame to kind of do more of the work of showing how intricate and different the piece is. So we'll see how this works out, guys. So I'm going to pick out of this huge bush that I got here at Hobby Lobby, you guys saw earlier. I'm just going to pick a few of the longer pieces, but I'm not going to uh, cut off the really big, huge ones. I just want, I'm sorry, I said longer pieces. I meant shorter pieces here. So that's, that's kind of, that's a little bit of a shorter piece. So I'm going to cut a lot of the smaller pieces off of this bush. Not, not anything really huge or, or the long ones. Maybe one, you never know what you might want to throw in there at the last minute. So let me just cut a few of these off, you guys. I really like the light lime green. It, it adds like a really cute contrast to it. So that's why I'm, I'm going for the, the, the shorter pieces in the middle of this bush because they're, they're really bright. They're, they're really bright lime green. They make me happy. It's green, it's pretty, and I like it. And I'm going to put some darker ones in there too. No fret, no worries, no worries, guys. Actually, the long, the darker ones are like super long, so I'm probably not going to do that. 
we'll just leave this, the ferns, we'll leave it as the light color. And these are kind of, of more of a plasticky look. They are really bright, but they're, uh, they're plastic. They're made out of plastic, so um, they're actually bendable, too. They've got wire in them, so they're very, um, it's a good quality for an artificial bush as far as um, the paint job on them, too. It's not hokey looking or cheapy. And the wire in them is pretty good. So I'm going to and I'm gonna put this guy on the floor over here because I'm just running out of room on this side. So now I can work with this more to the side. I'm going to try and push you guys back again just to make sure I can get more of my workspace in here for you. It's really not working out, guys. I'm sorry. I'm still trying to work out how to get more of this uh, space in here for you guys to see how we're doing. Now, granted, this is a really weird-shaped project that's not really lending much... For me to, um, as far as it's not, it's not very versatile for me to show you my whole workspace. So I think what I'm going to do is without trying to cover up too much, and I also don't want to add one little thing to every little piece. I kind of want it to be a little spread out, want it to be a little bit different. So um, first time watching on, sh on Facebook. Oh, thanks, Rosalind. I appreciate you being here. Uh, Helen, yes, the announcement was that I am going to go to Texas in June for a huge Wreath Makers Live convention. So I'm extremely nervous because I have never traveled by myself ever. And um, I'm pretty sure I, I can do it. I can do it. But um, that was the announcement that I've, I've made an investment and a commitment to turn this into more than just what it is. I want to be able to do this for you guys more frequently, more often. I want to try a lot of different things. And I want to be able to bring you guys more stuff. So anytime that you can bring somebody something else that benefits them in their own personal life, that's kind of rewarding at the same time as being able to make it into a career, right? I mean, there's a reason why you do what you do. If you're good at it, um, then you were supposed to do it. Uh, that's what a lot of, uh, like I said before, my business mentor, Julie Samaka, had said. You know, God gives you talents, and he, he gives you these talents in order for you to use them, and you can you become creative, and you may not understand it or may not know it, but you inspire people, people inspire you. It's like a give and take kind of thing. You learn from others, others learn from you. It's a rewarding thing. It makes me feel good. And all of you guys have been so dang amazing. There's, there's so many messages I get of, of things that I would have never even thought that I would have an impact on. Like, really? Okay. Well, I'm extremely happy that, that that has happened because I've been there myself. So apparently, like I like to say, you learn here, I'm learning here more that we are so more, all of us are so much more alike than you really think. And it's kind of amazing that previous to this in Facebook, I would have never met anybody out of state. I would have never, you know, again, like you guys know, I've traveled out of Las Vegas twice in my life. I mean, by airplane, sorry. We've made some road trips here and there, but it's usually always to Disneyland. <laughs> That's because I'm a Disneyland. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kid at heart. My, my philosophy is you're never too old for Disney. Off topic, guys. Sorry, but that's what I'm doing. Uh, what part of Texas? Donna, where it's the, the, the com conference is in Fort Worth. It's in Fort Worth, Texas, so I'll be flying into Dallas, Dallas-Fort Worth area. So um, that's going to be a little exciting, a little different. And... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes. So guys, what I've done here is I've placed greenery around the bow and that's it. I just stuck some ferns under this bow here on each side. So I'm liking what I'm seeing here. And this again is just the beginning. So it's going to take, you know, it takes a little bit for your, your piece to come to life. And once you see things coming in here and there, you get super excited. So I have my glue pot or my glue skillet over here. You guys can't really see it off camera. So I'm going to place that in here, and I'm just going to start gluing these pieces in down here in the back on the sides. So I only have four pieces, two, two ferns on each side, and I'm getting them into places where I want them to stick to this, um, the frame. They're sticking to the frame of, of this uh, square or rectangle grapevine. And then some of these are actually, some of this is going on the bow too. And again, that's not a bad thing. Whatever little bit you can get that 
uh, lends more support, more more things for the glue to anchor to than power to it. More you know, more power to you because that's basically your your end result is you want to have the support for the pieces to stay on, stay adhered. Hot glue is pretty solid; it's not going anywhere, um, but every little bit helps. So there's that. There's that. I'm gonna start putting some of the. Uh, ficus pieces in here left and right. Now again, these are the kind of thinner material on the ends here after you cut them off of the stem. Um, they're a little bit uh, thinner, so your hot glue is going to melt them. I don't want to use my steel pick machine on this because this frame is super thin. If you see here guys, this frame is super thin and if I was to try to stick something in here with a big sharp piece of metal on it, it's not good. It, it'll stick through. It, it's really not needed in this particular instance. It wouldn't really help. Hmm. Oh, that's cool, Kimberly. She's going to use some of the uh, bigger pieces to cut down and make them into Easter spring and each Easter wreaths. That, that's a very good thing. I love doing that. That's why I bought those bigger garlands and I use them for Christmas pieces. Also, evergreen stuff, you guys, is huge for Christmas but you can also use it for a lot of other projects. Um, there's evergreen, I mean, every time, any, basically any kind of swag. I've got some white, white evergreen swags that um, I got from christmascentral.com, I guess. Yeah. Um, and you can use those for Easter and Valentine's. I mean, it's an all white swag and it would look great with red all over it with hearts and little cherubs and all that cute stuff. Now, some of these I'm sticking into the back of the bow. Remember, guys, I like to throw things into a bow. So all I did here was I added these little ficus pieces. So you can kind of see how your piece starts to come to life, the more little extras that you kind of start to, to throw in left, right, here, and there. So I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. I'm dipping that in my glue skillet over here, and I'm putting some behind. And I'm putting some on top of those existing fern pieces I had just put in. And if you have to glue them on top, no harm, no foul, because um, your bow will cover it. You'll find other pieces that will cover it. It's not, um, it's not detrimental to the end result you're looking for. It won't be. It won't be, guys. Trust me, it won't. I'm going to glue this one right here underneath that part of that bow. So that's put peeking through just a little bit. Okay. So here's where I'm going to start to add tulips. And I'm only going to add tulips in a few little weird spots, okay? And then remember, I still have these two pieces of uh, these two picks, the, the white and then the, the purple boxwood. I saved a couple pieces off to the side because I'm probably going to cut this one in half and use that in the bow. But I'll show you guys towards the end. So here's where I need to make my decision. These are all my leftover tulips. You guys saw me make the pink one online, and then I made a purple and green one. Um, I've also made an orange and green one, a purple and yellow. I made, I've made a lot of wreaths, you guys. And you'll see all those pictures soon. Um, so I want to add a little bit of both because I have a lot of these, a lot of these colors are, are in this actual piece. So I know I have, this one I have a couple pieces left on. I'm just looking for the ones I've already cut into. So these two are brand new. I haven't used those for anything. And I think on the two purple ones, I would just have to use what I have because these are brand new. So what I'm going to do on this particular one, aside from the wreath we made, the, the tulip wreaths where you kind of make them shorter, I'm going to cut these longer. And you're going to need to have something to anchor them to, so you have to depend on your wreath form in this instance because um, this is a very thin form it doesn't have uh, the the beefiness I guess you could say beefy it doesn't have the beefiness that a regular grapevine does so I'm just cutting these pieces off and I'm gonna lay some of them in and I'm gonna take a look at it I hope it works out if it doesn't we'll have to just go flowerless oh, that's, that hurts me to say that <laughs> but we'll see how it goes so I definitely want to try to use all of these. And I actually am missing a tulip on this one. Hold on one sec, guys, because I have a little stash over here. There we go. 
all the little pieces that fall off, I save them off to the side in the store, in the you know, in the in the cart, and I put them in a bag. So this one is a pink one that fell off, and it's kind of loose. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little dab of glue from the glue gun there, and pop this guy back on, and now he's not gonna go anywhere. See, the other ones are kind of tight; they're not coming off unless you pull on them. So now that's that's fixed into it. It's got three buds again. So I just want to lay these here, and I'm just gonna take a peek to see if what I'm thinking is gonna work out. And so far it, it does, it looks, it looks actually really cute. So I'm a little excited about this. Yeah, yeah, okay guys, I'm a little excited. So we'll leave that there, that there. Um, we go with this darker pink one and then I'll cut some purple off and you guys tell me. This is just stuff I, I went and I looked for. I, I really wanted to have a ride with you guys today and I really wanted to use this, um, this form so I just kind of went in there to see what I had on hand. And I knew I had these, these tulips left over from the wreath, the tulip wreath that I made before. Um, let's just cut a couple purple and we'll see how far this gets us. And then here's some light purples. <clears throat> so this is all the colors we have in, I mean, other than red. Um, my Michaels out here, I couldn't find any red. I got four red bushes, which is that first one I made, that little small mini one. Um, I got four red bushes, and the rest I had to put in there was white. So I, for the life of me, couldn't get red tulips out here. I only looked at two stores, though, you know, full disclosure. I didn't drive to all of them. I only, I, I only, lurked, I only looked at two stores. But two different stores on different parts of the city where I work and where I live. Couldn't find any red ones, so I only bought the four that I could find. Pretty sure that's that's okay, right? I bought them out, which is also kind of upsetting because whoever came behind me didn't get any red ones either. I would have bought a lot more. <laughs> so here's my my four colors. Dark pink, light pink, dark purple, and light purple. So I think these are going to look really pretty. This is very soft. It's very, you know, these all are uh, wreathmakerslice.com, ignore previous, uh, for convention. Oh, it's Wreathmakers Live, you guys, sorry. It's wreathmakerslive.com. If you've seen it and you want to go, you're going to learn a lot of stuff. Um, it, it'll be really, really fun. If you guys want to come, you can meet me. I'll be there. I don't know if that's something that would... <laughs> It seems weird to say it like I'm going to go see people that I watch. My business mentor and, and coach will be there and then some other pretty big people in the wreathing industry will be there. But if you guys want to see me, I mean, it's strange to say that, but I would love to meet you guys. Um, it's, it's going to be a pretty big thing in June. Again, I'm excited and terrified at the same time. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, uh, Texas gal. Okay, Susan, you're a Texas gal. Nice. Uh, let's see. Thanks, Johnny Berta. Oh, let me see. Did I? I'm sorry, guys, if I missed some stuff in here. I'll go back after the Facebook Live is over, and I'll try to answer everything I can. If it's something that I, I miss and you don't hear from me, just message the page, and I will definitely see that, and I get to every single message I get. So, so far, I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm able to answer any questions you guys. You message my Facebook page, and I will definitely get back to you. Um... For a better glass, good friend has battling the flu since Christmas. No fun. Jeez, that is not fun. Uh, so sorry, you guys. I'm, I've am i been talking and I haven't been checking. Um, oh, Berto, yes. Uh, wreathmakerslive.com. And there is a Facebook page for it. You can register to it if you want to go. There's limited spaces. So make sure if you want to go, you get in on it now. Um it's an investment. It's definitely an investment, but it's worth it for, for if it's, you know, something that you're, you you want to do and you want to turn it into a, a into a long-term good, good thing. So you guys back to this, <clears throat> I got one stem of each of the colors, light pink, dark pink, dark purple, light purple. And I kind of put them a little bit in some sort of length order. And I'm going to take those four here and I'm going to see how I can get them attached up here, kind of under the piece that I've already been working on here. I know you guys can't really see that well. And I'm going to kind of see how I want to adjust them here. <clears throat> and I might put this one shorter. Actually, just dropped one. Great. Okay, so I'm going to have to put them in one at a time. 
lost a tulip, so I'm gonna have to glue that back on. Um, oh, no, no, no. This uh, is turning into a really pretty project. I'm really loving it. So what I have to do here, you guys, is one at a time here. I want this dark purple one to be the longest one. I'm going to need to use that fern. So a lot of your greenery now is going to turn into an anchor point, too. So you've got, i got glue on the tip of that. I'm going to kind of just nestle it in back behind here. So let me pick this up and see if I can get this view in. Here's the side of the project I'm working on, right? So when you see this here like this, you see the lip. You're going to lift up these leaves here. And this fern comes back here. This is going to be pushed back down this way so you don't see any of this. I've got that piece stuck into the, the, the wreath and then underneath this fern piece here. So that's where I'm going to be push, pushing in all the rest of them. And then also we're going to add some greenery to the top so you don't really see the behind the scenes. You're not going to see the glue. You're not going to see you know, the wire pieces sticking in or out. You're going to, and you're not covering up too much of the fern. You still get enough of the fern peeking out down here at the side that um, it'll lend just enough. Of, of what it of what it's supposed to do it, it'll be it'll it'll be great it'll be great guys so I'm gonna kind of bend that a little bit I got that pushed in there and then I'm gonna add this so all I'm doing is just adding the next one next to it off to the side next to it on the side here the idea is to just make sure that I have enough glue on the ends and enough glue on the pieces that it's sticking to that once it, it, it adheres, it's going to adhere to itself as well as um, the form, the ferns, and then of course, like I said before, and itself. So this is kind of long, but if too much of it sticks through on the back, we'll just cut that off because see, I have sort of a long piece here. But also, I want to make sure this really gets into here. And um, I want these to sort of stick out just a little bit. And here, I'm trying, you guys on the back here, this, is, this one's going under. I want it to go over, so I'm going to kind of push that that way. I've got some glue on my nail. Um, and if that piece sticks out too much in the back, what I'll do is I'm going to, I'll cut it. I'll cut it off in a in a little bit just just like that so here's the end result yeah it did if you look back here it came through all the way back here this is where the piece ended up so from where I stuck it in here on the back you can see that piece is coming straight up this way I gotta cut all this off and I'm gonna add some more glue to it since it dried out a little bit while I was adjusting it so this is where your glue gun comes in handy. So when I'm doing a project, I always have my glue skillet on and my glue gun because they're both going to be your buddy. And this one is more or less for like gravity. I need gravity to help me or, you know, tight spaces that you're just not going to be able to put glue skillet things on. So I'm just letting that glue kind of work its way here and there. And remember, guys, we're going to cover up all of this mess back here with, with leaves. You're not going to see any of this stuff. It'll just look like greenery has grown out from behind the piece, and you won't see any of that. Should anyone ever take it off, look at the back of your wreath. If you're making this for yourself and you don't really have a preference, then don't worry about it. You don't got to cover it. If you're going to make it for a gift or you're going to sell it to a client, I preferably like to cover pieces. I don't want you to have to look at all of the ugly behind the scenes. Uh, some people don't want to see it. Some people do. Never a problem. I cover them up anyway, so never worry that you'll have to look at something like that. Let me see here. This is a little smaller two-piece one. Let me see if I have any other two-piece tulip ones here. These are all. Here's a, a light purple. All right, I'm probably going to stick these two down here at the bottom by this guy. So I'm just kind of trying to map things out. As much as possible, this is all pretty much just guesswork, you guys. I haven't really, I don't really plan most of this stuff out. Sometimes I'll tell you if I've watched a tutorial, I'll let you know. This seriously is just, I grab some stuff and let's see what we can come up with kind of, kind of deal. And I think on this side, since I have these tulips coming down on this side, on this side, I'm going to have them come up. So the meat of the meat and the potatoes of this piece will be towards the top. And we'll just put a few accents down here. 
So you guys tell me. <clears throat> Annie, did you already get a flight? I fly out Thursday, June fourteenth from McCarran. Oh, you, and you live here. Uh, you're gonna be in, going to the the McCarran Airport. Nice. No, I'm uh, I'm gonna book this. I'm gonna have my husband. He's gonna help me with that. I'm gonna book that once I get off here, and then we gotta do the book the super shuttle too after we get our flight thing. But no, I'm gonna be leaving um, on the 14th. Also, I just hope I can get a flight and do all stuff. But yeah, I'll be leaving the 14th. Also, fly out the 14th uh, because I believe there'll be a small little get together for um, people in the group that night, and then the convention starts uh, Thursday, the 15th. Or sorry, Friday. Friday and Saturday. But yeah, I'll be leaving from McCarran Airport as well. It's kind of awesome that you're that close. Uh, Kelly, I am dipping the stems into a glue skillet that's kind of off to the side right here. You can kind of see it right here at the bottom of your of the screen. This right here is a little tiny square skillet that heats up and it's just full of glue. So I dip the ends into it, um, which is really good for floral pieces. Um, Otherwise, you you can do the same thing with your glue gun. You would just add glue to the end of your stem here and then place it into where you want it to go. I I just got my glue skillet probably last summer and it has been so convenient and so much fun for what I've wanted it to do. I'm super excited about it. So I suggest, I recommend, I definitely recommend it for anyone who's looking for um, a little bit more convenience, a little bit more efficiency when it comes to floral, artificial floral design and um, arrangements, those types of things. So yeah, this is a little tricky, you guys, because of the construction of this wreath. So I need to kind of just see where I can add this guy in here on the left and the right. Oh, Nancy, yes, I do. I have pictures of my, of my craft room. I don't have that many pictures of in here. I have them in my second supply room, but not too much in here. I should get some of those on because it's pretty, I'm pretty happy with it in here now. It's pretty clean. Pretty good to go. I'll do that for you guys. I'll take some pictures. And yes, you live in Las Vegas. Well, good. I won't be alone. Maybe we'll be on the same flight. You never know. It'll be nice to not be completely alone. At least I can talk to somebody else who's traveling out of state for wreathing, for, for wreathing, the wreathing, the crafting community. I was joking around with my husband and I was calling it CraftCon because, you know, like, there's a lot of different, like, comic book conventions and everything that's a convention, they use the word con. So I'm going to call it CraftCon or WreathCon. <laughs> and the people at work think I'm crazy, but they already know that, so that's their fault. But they love everything I make, so I can't be too crazy. All right, I've worked that in, and I got it. Okay, I won. Dominoes. I won. All right. So now, guys, because I got that worked in there, I'm going to actually use my glue gun because I'm not pulling it back out. A little bit difficult to work with this frame. I'm going to let you know up front. This piece here, this tulip, I have it going underneath this piece right here. It's coming up under and it's going under this piece, under this piece, <laughs> and it's coming out right here. I don't even know if you guys can even see that. It's coming out right here. You see that? So because of the way I needed it to be in there, I'm also going to need to use this as my anchor for my other two tulips. I'm going to, oh, this is coming out. I'm gonna, I don't want it to come out. I like this part of the sticks. All right, so I'm going to do this. Start starting to fall apart a little bit because it's, this thing is put together with a lot of good, um, looks like these pretty heavy duty staples, but I have some sticks here that are falling apart off the side. So I'm just, I just threw some hot glue on that real quick because I don't want them to go. I think they're cute. They add to the spindly nature of it. Sorry guys, I'm just waiting for this to dry. And I'm gonna try to catch up here. Hey Carol, I live in Spring, Texas. Nice, you guys. Wow, look at all those hearts you're getting. I know, I love it when I see that stuff come across the screen. You guys are so great. You guys treat me well, I love it. Uh, you're just a jump away. Oh Donna, you're that close to, you guys are close to each other. And Nancy, I love the way you display your floral in your room. Brilliant. Yes, that, that little floral wall thing was a good collaboration between my brain and my husband. And it turned out great. And I'm excited to share it with you guys. And a couple people have messaged me and said that they've already implemented it. So it's pretty cool to see that the shoe rack brackets really help crafters out. 
Thank you. I love it. I'm seeing all of my little hearts and thumbs up. You guys are so awesome. Okay, so this is dry, uh, it's drying. I'm going to shoot glue on this tulip thing. If that doesn't stick, you guys, I'll have to do that in post. I don't want you guys to have to watch me fight with the... Uh, with the, uh, the the issue I'm having here with the sticks coming off of this wreath. So here's my next one. I'm going to put this in here. And now, because I've already got my purple one glued in, and it's actually kind of using tension in here, this should be much easier to kind of place this guy in here next to it. I'm going to place that guy right there next to that. And then I need my little light pink one. I'm going to save that one and save that one for the bottom. Here's my light pink one. Let me throw this guy down in here. I'm going to put this guy right here on top a little bit. Just messing with my bow here a little bit, seeing how I can get things played along, played with. All right, so here, guys, tulips going down and tulips going up. So tulips down on this side, tulips up on this side. And I'm pretty much done here. I don't want to keep adding more stuff to the bow area. I'm just going to add little tiny pieces here and there with the more of this stuff. Now, those two fern pieces, where did they go? Here they are. I want to try to get the bow squared away, but I also want to add... A little bit maybe I need to put this one down here I'm just trying to see I'm so sorry you guys you can't really see it's an awkward size so again sorry about the angles I'm not going to be able to show you exactly everything but trust me when I say I'm getting my lights my I got new studio lights coming so I can take better pictures for you guys those guys are coming I believe they're being delivered on Tuesday I thought they're believing I thought I was gonna get them tomorrow but I got it mixed up with something else. So there actually won't be here until Tuesday. So Tuesday, I will be a picture taking crazy girl, crazy woman. So I got to take pictures of a lot of tulip wreaths, a lot of good things. I want to get pictures on this for the end of my YouTube, but it won't be possible because I don't want to have to wait. I don't want you YouTube. If you guys are watching YouTube, I didn't want you to have to wait until Tuesday. I know a lot of you guys like uh, you message me and you like to see things weekly and I don't want to disappoint you. So I will have to just put some pictures in post, but after I publish the YouTube, I can't add to it without taking it down. So um, if you want to see in pictures um, and you don't follow me on YouTube, you can always take a look at Instagram. There's a link in the description, Instagram. You don't have to have an Instagram account to look at pictures on Instagram. You don't have to have a Facebook account either. So if you guys want to go over just to look at pictures, you should be able to do that. They will be in, there will be finished pictures on, on my Facebook page. So all I did was take those extra two pieces of fern. I stuck one up here behind this heart, and I stuck one coming up this way behind this heart here. So I'm just adding that in to put a little bit of pieces here and there. And um, down here on this side, I am going to put, um, I think I'll put a bow over here. And I'm, I don't, again, I want this wreath to stay the main focus. I really like the construction of it. It's different, and I hadn't seen anything kind of like this very often. So... I want to leave this guy as the main event, you could say. So I'm just going to take a few pieces here and there and um, add them around the sides. I don't want to cover up the whole thing. You know, a, an average grapevine wreath, the little circle grapevine leaves, you guys, you can find them everywhere. They're very common. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. You can use those as a base for a lot of different things that you don't mind having covered up. like. You can use it for the tulip wreaths. You can just fill the whole entire frame up with flowers and then you don't have to really worry about um, missing out on anything. So I'm just kind of jabbing this down in behind this heart here. I'm just kind of pushing that in to where I can find it. And then I'm going to bend the wire pieces of it to kind of manipulate it to the way I want it to go. I'm going to check it on the back here to make sure. Oh yeah, I got that in there. Yeah, it's glued to the heart and it's glued to the wreath, so we're good to go on that. Um, I've got some more ficus leaves you can add to the backs of here, because again, a little bit of variety goes a long way. 
So remember, this is a very thin material after you cut it off of your stem, so work quickly as far as um, that's concerned so you're not... Uh, it, basically, you're, you're working with melted, melted plastic at that point, not just the hot glue. So you just have to make sure you can get it in there as fast. Not fa I don't want to say rush it in and get it in all... Just hurry up and get it in there quickly. So there's just little things here and there, guys. I'm going to just start throwing them in. And then i got to cut up those two little pieces, and we'll see how it goes. Um, uh, somebody had asked me previously to do a swag, or not a swag, a lantern swag. And I am, I do have an Easter lantern swag I have planned to do. That Easter lantern, lantern swag may be next weekend or um, a different Valentine's wreath I have planned because I want to do that Provo video, so I want to do a mesh Easter wreath. But I have a jute and red mesh that is absolutely gorgeous that you guys may see, quick not quickly, but soon. That one may be coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for that, and then keep throwing ideas out. Um, I have, I don't, I know you guys are asking about military, and I would absolutely love to do a military. Um, I don't have any supplies on hand though, so I would need to buy some. I need to do some research. But I also have I have some stuff for um, police officers. I have a sign that I bought that's um, uh, the the black and blue theme. It's got the police badge and or it's a cross. One of I can't remember. Oh guys, I bought the most gorgeous crosses at Hobby Lobby. I've got some beautiful beautiful Easter wreaths that are going to be showing up very soon. I don't know if you guys want to see those done because it's basically like instead of using a sign that you would buy to put in your wreath, I've got this gorgeous wooden cross that looks weathered and it's just beautiful and it's going to go into the side through spring flowers, very fresh. Those cross, the, the crosses are beautiful from Hobby Lobby. Um, those are going to be coming up very, very soon. I don't know if I like the purple up here. I think I like the pink. So, you guys let me know the, let me tell you, my, the well does not run dry from ideas. It's usually, it's usually budget. <laughs> it's usually budget. Hopefully I can make things that I already have the supplies for, but again, it's, I am, I am if nothing but dependable when it comes to buying new stuff. All right, guys, I got this one glued in. I just wanted to get good placement for the tulips. I'm going to bend that a little bit, and now I'm going to check it back here just to make sure I got good contact. Okay, good contact. And, you know, the more I look at this on the back, the more that I add to it, you can't see the, the stickers on the back of those hearts anyways, but we're definitely going to cover all those pipe cleaners with, with, with um, leaves. Okay, so guys, what's next? What's next? I got two tulips put down here. I'm gonna add a little bit, a few more pieces of those greenery and then a, a loop. I, I keep saying it's, we're almost done, but we're nowhere. I mean, I'm so sorry guys if this is getting long. Let's see what else. Donna, yes for Easter and the crosses for sure. Perfect. I will, Donna, I guarantee you say that yes, I would like to see the ones with the crosses. Uh, do you sell your wreaths? Kelly, yes, I absolutely do. I sell this particular one also. Most of the stuff I'm doing on my Facebook page, you will see on my Etsy shop. My Etsy shop is Crafty Thoughts Shop. Um, and yes, I do sell them, especially now since I'm going to try to finance myself to go to that June conference. I've already made the commitment, so now I need to find a way to... Well, what do you call that? To finance it. <laughs> um, and it is what it is, guys. You know, it's it's not something I don't want anyone to feel obligated. I just was uh, sharing my happiness with you guys, and I wanted you to know that um, a lot of it is inspiration I got through you guys. I started this uh, in May of last year, terrified, not knowing if you guys would be accepting, if, if my stuff was any good, and let alone it being a really good confidence booster. I get so many good, helpful, wonderful, encouraging messages that I'm pretty sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> so I took a leap. I'm going to this conference. I'm going to learn so many things. It's going to help me get closer to where I need to be, whether 
I, I mean, I'm pretty, I get a lot of good stuff that says you guys I'm pretty good at teaching. So what I want to do is I want to continue to do it. I want to do it in a more professional format. I want you guys to be happy. So what I can do now is continue to show you this stuff and then we'll see how it goes. You guys share my videos, share my, my lives, uh, my Etsy shop, support local or hand, handmade all artists. I love buying stuff from other people. I actually just bought some doggy stairs, or sorry, a doggy ramp, because I have little dachshunds. You guys know I have miniature wiener dogs. Gladys, you are so gifted. Thank you, Gladys. I appreciate that. You guys, I get so dang happy that sometimes I just tear up when I'm reading comments on my lunch hour or something. I just get so dang happy. It just, it really does make my day. It also makes it a lot easier to get through my nine to five when you're just having a really bad day. I'll go and I'll read your comments and you guys make me so happy. It's just amazing. It's like, I feel like I don't give you guys enough for you to be so, for you to guys, I don't know. It's like give and take. I feel like I get so much out of you guys. And this is really fighting me down here. I just want you to know while I'm talking, these tulips down here are arguing with me to the point where I'm going to have to get a little mean. All I'm doing is just trying to find a little open spot to kind of push these through on. And I think at this point now, I'm not going to be able to use the glue skillet. I think I'm going to have to use my glue gun. So just give me one second, guys. Um, Beverly, you have two dachshunds also. Yeah, I got two little black and tan wiener dogs. And they're getting kind of up there in age. They turn 11 this year. And um, I can tell they're not jumping up and down the stairs like they used to. We have little doggy stairs for our sofa and our bed. And so I found a shop on Etsy out of, I think they're in Missouri. Uh, it's a husband and wife combo that he hand makes. He's a carpenter and he makes, oh, that's perfect there. I won you guys, finally. Um, he makes ramps and with the carpet with little paw prints on it. I'll show you guys as soon. I won't get it for about another month because they're handmade. But my bed in my bedroom is kind of high. It's about two feet. It's more than two feet, but the ramp I bought is about two feet. Um, I can share on my page, you guys, who I bought it from. It's a little pricey, but it's a one-time investment. And you have to figure, um, a lot of times with, st with stairs, especially dog stairs, um, it becomes a piece of furniture. So it, to me, I don't, um, I don't really want some of the cheaper looking stuff. I want it to look kind of nice. Now, granted, this is going in my master bedroom. Nobody goes in there but me and my husband. And if for some reason you're in my master bedroom, then you're a really close friend and you don't really shouldn't really be judging me on my furniture, right? <laughs> so um, this ramp is solid. It's made of solid wood. It comes fully assembled and it's super, super, super cute. I'm excited to get it. So I'll show you. I'll share their Etsy page on mine. That way I can support another local business or another handmade business. Um, they're out of Missouri and um, he had an, an older dog ailing that needed help getting up and off the furniture, but uh, so far, these are really popular with dachshund owners because if you own a dachshund, if you're a doxy mom like me, you'll know they have, um, you know, they have back issues a lot, and most of the time you should probably be very mindful to prevent them from happening because it's either catastrophic, life-ending, or or uh, budget-breaking when they when you have to get those surgeries for them. Bless their little hearts, but um, it's a, a lot of a lot of it is about protecting their backs. So this ramp. Is very very well made they have a lot of reviews their Etsy shop has done very well and I honestly am very sorry guys right now I cannot remember the name of that Etsy shop but I will definitely share it on my page once I'm done and if you're watching this on YouTube uh, take a look in the description I'll put a description I'll put a link to their shop and in the, the Etsy shop in my just in the description so you guys can go up there and click on it and take a look if you're in it because there it's not just for dachshunds there's other ones too um, their story was that they had a boxer that was abused when they adopted it and the boxer had had some leg injuries from the abuse it went through and was having problems getting on, on and off the, the sofa. And so when he went to go try to find some, some stairs in the stores, he was having a, a really bad problem because the dog is bigger so it had a heavier weight limit and a lot of the stairs were made out of plastic and they were really flimsy so... He decided to make them and then it turned into a beautiful thing. So it's another little cute love story when it comes down to what we do for our dogs, right guys? So what I did, you guys, is I'm going to start now cutting off the little pieces here 
to these extra bushes I have. This one's just this little white one. It's green with white tips on it. It's kind of frosted a little bit. I just cut it off into little pieces. And these are the little pieces I'm working with. And all I'm doing is I'm going to nestle these into different areas. So I'm just kind of, you know, all I do is I preliminarily just test out my idea and I just place things here and there. I don't put anything in permanently. Now, majority of the time, I usually fall in love with what I've done and I just go ahead and I glue it in. So it's find the place, you know, just kind of stick it in where you think that it might look good. And if you absolutely love it, then commit and um, glue it in. And then you don't have to, I just drop it. Then you glue it in and you don't have to worry about um, taking it back out or it falling out or you forgetting where you put it. So this piece fell off, so all I did was I just glued it back on. It's kind of like when the tulips fall off the end, I glued it back on. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to put that under here. Just a little bit under here, yeah. Okay, guys, so majority of this I'm loving. I'm going to cut up some more of that white piece. I might. I didn't think I would use all of it, but you guys, it's coming down to where it looks like I might. So no harm, no foul. Uh, let me just remember where I put some of these here. And I'm just tapping them into my glue skillet and then placing them back into the wreath. Now it's the majority of the work here is cutting things apart, tapping it in the glue, and then working it back into the piece. Now this one here I'm going to glue into the bow. And so all I did was I put glue on the very end and then you lift your loop up and you stick it right down into the, the piece of the bow where everything's uh, uh, secured together and you're gluing it in. All the pieces will stick to itself. Your bow will come out and it will look like the pieces kind of grew throughout the bow. Not that you shoved something in there last minute. You'll, you can tell that it, it'll, look, it'll look natural. It won't look bad. You're not going for... Um, any kind of like crazy in fact I'm gonna rip these pieces off here so did you see what I did here this piece came on here this piece came on here so I just pulled them off I'm gonna cut this a little bit shorter here right where those two pieces came off at okay so now this piece is gonna go in and I'm gonna stick these into my bow so I got one I'm gonna come out from right here and one I'm gonna have to come out from right there do you see how that works you guys just take the bow, I'm going to dip that in my glue skillet, pop that guy in there, and pop that guy right up under this, this red loop here, and then I'll hold it up and I'll show you guys what we're working with. Okay, I need to get one more piece, I need some greenery down here at the bottom, so i got to get my ficus bush back out, cut off another piece for the bottom, I can see a a bare spot where I'm going to need more greenery. I'll show you guys down here at the bottom. I'm getting sidetracked before I forget. Let me dip this in here. Place that in there. Dip this guy here. Place that in there. So here I'll show you. That's what your bow looks like. All I did was place this guy in here, and I put this guy where, no, right under here. You're gluing them in between the bows. So you're going to lift your loop up and stick that in. This one is already like a natural place where my bow kind of came apart, and I filled it in there. I'm going to put some more stuff in there so it doesn't just look like one piece of white is just sticking straight out. I'm going to put some more stuff in there. Um, but now I'm working down here at the bottom. See, like this piece here, I just kind of stuck in. But I, I don't want everything to just be coming up the top here. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to put this in first. Yeah, and I'm going to glue that one down. Sorry, guys. This is kind of, uh, again, it's an awkward view only because of the shape of this wreath is sort of awkward. So I kind of want to make sure you guys can sort of see what I'm doing. But I don't know if that's really going to translate for you. So, so sorry, so sorry. I'm going to glue these little green pieces in. All I'm doing is cutting these pieces off of their larger bushes, putting glues on glue on the end of it, and then kind of working them in and out and under of the existing piece. Now that came off, but I'm not going to pull it back out. 
I kind of like it now. This piece came off. Remember, it had three pieces on it. So that's what it looks like down there, and I kind of like it. I'm going to leave it that way, and I will find somewhere to put that, or I'll use it on another project. Um, I think what I'm going to do here... I'm going to cut this tulip really short and kind of stick that down in there. I have an idea, guys. Yeah. So I'm going to cut my stem on this tulip super, super short because I can see a little hole right in through here that I'm going to be able to kind of just nestle that into. And it shouldn't stick out the back so far that it'll cause a problem or a scratch on the door. So I'm going to put this right down in here. That kind of sticks out a little bit. And I got some tulips, a little white guy poking out there, a little bit of your ficus. That's what we're working with so far. Um, you can put some moss in here too. I'm thinking like a couple pieces of moss nestled here and there. Um, now I'm still thinking there might be some extra pieces I want to add to this. Um, I didn't do anything with this purple bunch yet. Do you guys you guys still think I should put this in? What do you think? Let's see. Hi, Dorothy from in Sydney, Australia. Wow, thanks for joining me. Yeah, it's great to know that there are those that are willing to teach those, willing to learn. Yes, I love doing that. Thank you, Donna. All right, I'm getting hearts. So you guys want to see this purple put in there? Oh, Gladys, geez, I hope you do feel better. You have the flu, dear. Dang, so sorry. Yeah, oh, look at everybody else telling you they hope you feel better. Man, everybody's so dang nice and supportive. I love this, you guys. We have, like, a great little community going. Yeah, um, Donna, you said the flu is bad in Houston right now. People are lying on the floors in the ERs. Jeez. Um, I saw a lot of the pictures on some news stories on the map that almost, like, 20-some states are, including Nevada, my state, are all, like, crazy overflowing with the flu this year. It's kind of scary, you guys. Take care. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Oh, geez, yeah. Okay, so, so far everybody wants to see yes, 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 yes. All right, guys, and I'm going to put the purple in. Let's put the purple in and see how it goes. So let me cut off a couple stems. We might cut them up more because they, they think they're kind of long. So let's see what happens with these. So i got these little greenery pieces. I'm going to pull those off. So this is what the stem looks like, and I pulled, I pulled this off of it because that's how tiny it looks. I'm going to put this in the bow. So let's see how I can get that to kind of drape off a little bit somewhere in the piece. Adds a little bit more purple to it. Let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do with this. Kind of just getting things situated. Or, actually, let me just take a look and see what I can do here. A lot of this is kind of like little tiny tedious work, you guys, but it really does pay off once you see how pretty your piece looks. Um, you know, you get you get it to where you want it to be, and it's just it ends up being actually quite amazing. So I'm going to kind of do a little bit of surgery here. I'm going to cut that piece off. I'm going to try to thread this one. Uh, yep, that's what I did. I'm changing it up just a little bit. So I'm reconstructing... <laughs> I'm reconstructing this pick. I'll show you guys close up what I'll do in the next one because I just didn't know if it would work out. That's going to work out much better. All right, I'll show you guys what I did on the next one because I'm going to have to do this again. And it, it, the whole thing just came apart. Maybe not. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Let's see. Let me look at the construction on this. Okay, so this has a little diamond piece on it that should keep things from falling off, but it's not happening. I'm going to curl it down. Sometimes this stuff, you guys, you end up becoming a little bit of a handy person. You know, I had to twist that wire piece into a circle so these don't come off. It's almost like, uh, you ever watch anyone make, uh, make jewelry when they're, they're bending the little wire pieces? If anybody's a jewelry maker, I've seen my sister makes some pretty stuff with earrings and things. There we go. Alright. Oh, 
Okay, guys. I don't know if I'm going to do that again because the thing fell apart and I, yeah. It was one of those things where it kind of worked out this time, but I'm not going to do that for every single one because that was way too tedious and involved for what we were trying to accomplish. Okay, so those pieces will go in the bow. Um, I need some more ficus for the bow. Let's see where are we at on here. Uh, Sue, my first time seeing you live. Yes on the purple. Thank you, Sue, for joining me. I appreciate having you here. It's so nice. Um, yeah, usually, guys, I know a lot of times it does make a difference to um, catch someone live, to actually see, get to ask questions and interact with them. I know it makes a difference. I like to catch people live, too. Sometimes it doesn't happen. We all know life gets in the way. Timing gets in the way. What works for me won't always work for you. I'm now taking the, the ficus clip, and I'm... I'm actually cutting the leaves off of the piece here, see? So I'm going to use these leaves and I'm going to tuck these into my bow because I don't need the whole piece to stick out. I only want a piece here and there. You see, I'll show you the difference, guys. Here's an entire ficus, here's an entire ficus clipping off of the larger stem, right? And I want to place a leaf in my bow. So if I nestle this down here into my bow like that, that's fairly large and I I think it's taking away from the bow a little bit too much so instead of that I took the one leaf off of that pick I just cut it off and I'm gonna place it in there like that see how that lends just enough greenery it just changes it up just a little bit to where you're not looking at a huge amount and I'm gonna add more to that so you just get a little hint of green popping out that's the difference in why I like to look at these little pieces and I just basically cut them apart. They never, I don't ever really keep anything. Nothing really sticks together in my world. A lot of stuff gets uh, clipped apart. A lot of the stuff, like when I'm leaving the stores, they're like, oh, do you, do you mind if we put this in one bag? I'm like, oh, go for it. None of that stuff is staying in one piece anyways. Don't worry about it. And then they're laughing and they're like, oh, thank you so much. I'm like, don't worry about it. And half the time, if the stems are really, really big, I'm like, don't even worry about uh, a bag. I'll just lay it in the back of the car. So this has turned into a quite a cute little piece coming out of the bow there. So there, if you guys see here, I added the one leaf. I added the little extra clipping that came off of the purple bush here. That's this guy that came off of this. And so there's just extra little tiny pieces that you can add here and there that really take your project and kind of... Um, Push it up to the next level. Just adds a little bit of here and there that you wouldn't really expect to see, but then the same time, it really, it really does make a difference. And I still have to cut my bows, you guys. I still haven't cut those tails off of the one side. So where did my other? There we go. Got all these little extra pieces floating around. The size, you guys. It's awkward. It's very awkward. <laughs> I swear, if this is your first time watching me, I'm not usually this, like, crazy discombobulated. I'm usually much more organized, put together, I guess. I don't know. Um, again, had an exciting day, booked a trip, never taken a trip like this or by myself, if you didn't catch that earlier. And, and I'm working with a new shape wreath I've never worked with. It's all a little bit of a learning curve today it's all every everything just seems strange but it's all it's a, it's a good strange i'm a very it's a good happy strange i'm gonna cut this light colored one off here and kind of place that there to hide yeah i got some glue issues over here that i'm not happy with so i'm just cutting off another tiny ficus leaf and i'm sticking it at the top here at the base of this um this this little guy here it's gonna help me uh yeah, they're much happier with that. It's going to help me hide some of the icky glue part that got on the, the heart. That guy's here, not coming out. And again, if you, if you don't remember if you glued it in, tug on it a little bit. And if it comes out, you didn't glue it. Everything here seems to be good. Okay, guys. Um, I added one piece of purple. You guys wanted to see more purple. So let me get this one somewhere that will actually do us... Hmm... Where should I place it? I didn't really put anything. There's no white stuff over here. Maybe I'll put that in here. That looks pretty right there. Okay. 
So I'm going to add this extra little purple piece on this side. And then I'm going to do some one loop, one loop bow on this side and we'll be done. Um, after I'm done, you guys, I normally sit back and I look at my piece. And you guys tell me, tell me if you do this too. You hang it on the wall or you'll hang it on your door or wherever you want. Or even if you just lay it down and you take a peek at it. I like to go over and just look at stuff when I'm done. And it's not to pick it apart and it's not to criticize yourself. So don't do that because self-doubt is like the biggest thing you could ever do that's going to... It's going to hold you back craft-wise. If you've got the interest, if you like to craft, if you like to make things by hand, then you've already got half of your battle down. You already enjoy what you do. So that everything you enjoy, your own creativity comes out in the pieces you make. So don't sit back and criticize it. Just look for maybe things that you overlooked. So if there's like something here on the side that I say, okay, look, I have all this white pieces over here coming out of the bow, but I only put purple on this side, then go back in and place a white piece on that side or place a complementing color. Um, that's kind of like what I like to do. I'll sit back while I'm kind of tallying all the supplies or I'm getting my price sheet ready so I know how much I can price it at when I list it in Etsy or in the retail, in the retail side of things. And I'll look to see if there's anything else I can improve about it. Not change. And a lot of times if there's something tiny, I leave my glue gun and my glue skillet on and then I just and I and I have those little tiny pieces I can just walk over and place one little extra piece of this here or one little tiny dab of this there. And then also that's a good time to hold it upside down and shake it and tug on it. And that's your opportunity to make sure that nothing's gonna fall out. <laughs> So you guys tell me. Um, is a um, how do you say your name? Is it Isabus? That's really pretty. If that's how you say it, I love I love that. Whitney, look four thousand two hundred. Oh my gosh, four thousand two hundred twenty. Oh, growing because you heard. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that, Donna. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much. I wasn't paying attention. That's kind of awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so. <laughs> I'm enjoying, is this, I'm enjoying too much. I don't really watch it. Yours is peppy. Thank you. I try to make it, you know, I'm having fun with you guys. I am very happy and blessed that you guys are even able to do this with me. You're spending time with me on a Sunday. I'm spending time with you. It's like, it's like hanging out with buddies. Uh, Rosalind, carry some chewing gum for the flight. Yeah, good to know because I've only flown twice in my life. So we'll see if that pans out. Oh, Jan Wheeler, it's beautiful. Yeah, I haven't hit, I haven't really held it up for a while, you guys kind of what we're looking at. I mean, there is a lot of the frame showing, but I want it to do the work. I love the way this is still very springy. You know, you've got your, your hearts here for Valentine's, but you still have a good amount of the light purpley pink spring. It's kind of like Christmas. I leave my Christmas out until the end of this month, guys. So you can leave your Valentine's up until March. And if you're not a St. Patty's Day person, leave it up for March too. Fourth, I mean, not 4th of July. Jeez, I, I'm stuck on 4th of July, guys. I must be. All I can say is that if I'm stuck on 4th of July, I must have something met, wonderful planned in my brain because I keep saying 4th of July like crazy. Every time I want to do something, 4th of July comes out of my mouth somehow. So stay tuned because I must have something crazy planned for 4th of July that I just don't know about yet. I'm telling you, my brain is telling me that 4th of July is where it's at or something. So this is still really good and will be very useful for spring. Spring and going into summer and Easter. Yeah, I'm going to add that tulip there. Just a little bit of extra flower in here. Um, I didn't realize I was going to go so hard with the tulips. I thought maybe it would be just more greenery. But these tulips are really looking good. Plus, I had so many left over from all those tulip wreaths I made. And again, guys, sorry I haven't got pictures out, but as soon as I get my my right my light kit, my light kit is supposed to be here Tuesday. Um, about got give me two days, and my light kit gets here. You guys are going to get bombarded with pictures. You're going to have so many pictures showing up in your news feeds, all kinds of stuff. I think I'll put another little purple over here. Some purple down here somewhere. <laughs> So when you sit back and you take a peek at it, you'll find maybe here, there, or somewhere else you might want to add something to it. Go ahead and do it. It's not the it's not the process or how you got there. It's just 
the end result. Doesn't really, I mean, look at what I've done so far, you guys. This has been, I think, my most hectic live. I feel like I'm all over the place, and I think that's just because of that. It's because of the, uh, it's because of the trip I booked today. It really is. I'm not used to going out of state, especially alone, so this is going to be a huge thing. It's going to be a huge thing for me. Um, and again, everybody has their own own goals. Everybody's got a different uh, a different way of doing things, and I'm I'm like I'm super excited to get to get here, and and I'm very happy that you guys are here with me, watching me, helping me. It's been very very fun, and I cannot wait for what what's in store. You never know. You guys might be seeing me on TV. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to put anything out there. I'm just, whatever comes my way, it, I'll be more than excited and happy to uh, take it on. All right, last but not least, let's do a couple one-loop ribbons, and we'll place it uh, closer to this heart here on this side, kind of keep the bow on this one side, and then let the rest of this wreath speak for itself. So I'm going to take, let me get all this stuff out of the way a little bit pop this here and there. So here's all my extra scraps that I had. Um, this is what we're working with and I'm just going to place a couple one loops. This is what we have here. Here's your bottom. So that's what that looks like there. There's the middle piece. Here and here. And then I can't really tell too much. There's the top piece here. Got a little bit coming off to this side. I still have to cut some of these tails on here. So from further away, you guys can't see in too much detail, I'll get a good picture out to you. Um, that's pretty much what we're working with. And again, I wanted this frame to do, wanted it to be my main event. So I'm gonna leave this here because I'm gonna place this bow closer to this heart that says hug me. So I'm gonna try to pick a longer one here. Let's see. Love the frame. It's awesome. Thank you, Donna. That's beautiful. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so you guys are liking it. There you go. Okay, cool. I'm enjoying it. I don't watch many of these. Okay. Sure, you can carry some chewing gum. Gotcha. Okay. Where are we at here? Where are we at here? Lisa, Whitney, what is your favorite color? I like to make crosses out of beads. I will make you one. Okay. Um, that's obvious. Oh, thank you so much. I uh, My favorite color is greens. I use greens in everything. Green, green, green. Um, I also like purple and pink, but... Mainly in my home, everything is green, lots of green, probably because I live in the desert and there isn't much green out here. So I'm just going to try to take one of these longer ones here. So here's my scrap. It's already cut for me. Just going to keep this piece. Do you see how I folded it in half? So now I have a tail and a loop. And I'll show you how to do that again, but that's basically the premise. I'm doing that. And I'm only going to do it with a few of the ribbons. I'm going to use the purple polka dot because I had a lot of scraps left over. And then I'm going to use two of the um, one and a half inch ribbons. I don't know if I want to use this white one right here off to the side. Although it might be pretty down here on this one. Okay, you guys. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the pink and the red. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the pink and the red and I'm just going to cut off a piece and I'll show you, I'll tell you how long this is even though I don't ever measure anything, I'll show you. This is just, alright guys, this is exactly 12 inches, is that crazy? I couldn't do that twice if you paid me, well actually, I can do it twice, but it's because I'm using this one as a guide. So I cut two pieces, these are 12 inches each, right? I'm only going to dovetail one side, but I'm going to do it after I make the bow because I want them to kind of like... I don't really know how long I want one side to be than the other, right? So you take your piece here and you make your loop. This is now your tail. We don't need two tails, we're just making a one loop, one loop bow. So I folded it, not in half, but three quarters of the way you could say, right? So there's my piece there, okay? And then you just pinch that, pinch it together. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. So I'm holding the piece that I'm going to make as the base. You can pinch that, bring it forward to your thumb, thumb to thumb, pinch it together. And now you've got two one loop bows, right? 
Now this one may have already been cut because I had used it for a previous project, so if you want, cut that dovetail off, pinch it together here, and then bring it forward like that. Same, same instance, you're making your loop, one loop, bring it together and pinch it. So that's basically what you're holding. So now I've got my largest ribbon Sorry, you guys, I'm losing it here. My largest ribbon, and I'm just adjusting this in my hand where I'm pinching it. So you get your loop in the right place you want it, right? So there's your first loop. And I'm going to place the pink one on top and pinch, so I let that go. And I'm going to place the red one on top and pinch, so they're kind of all on top of each other. Doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be this one on top of this one on top of this one. You can kind of just kind of collectively like just place them together and push them and squish them together and just it'll, it'll end up being a beautiful mess is what I like to say it'll end up turning into a beautiful mess where did my pipe cleaners so now I'm gonna cut this in half again so I only need a half of a pipe cleaner for this little guy and it's the same premise as your large bow so you're gonna take your pipe cleaner and wrap it around the middle Try to get it as the center, you know, as centered as possible if you can. It's not crazy uh, important, but you're getting a tight, you're getting a tight squeeze. So I'm pulling that tight, and then I'm twisting it. I'm only doing two twists. This isn't going to be tugged on a lot. It's literally just a little bit of extra for your piece. So now this is basically your extra little tiny one loop bow. That's what it looks like. So I'm gonna now dovetail these ends because they actually turned out to be a little bit uh, different lengths than each other. Uh, again, because, you know, loops aren't always all going to be in, they're not going to be all identical, they're not going to be perfect, and that's the way we want them. We don't want anything to be... If it looks too perfect, then you're going to know something, you know, you can't, can't really hope that everything is so perfect. Now, this back one from the larger one I made, it's a little bit too long, so I'm just going to cut maybe a quarter... I'm maybe going to cut maybe a quarter of an inch off of that. Not nothing. I did about a half an inch, actually. And see, I like that a little bit better. So this is how it's going to lay in your piece, okay? That's what that means. There's the back of it. There's the sides. Here's what it looks like there. I'm pushing these loops down to cover up the pipe cleaner. And that's basically what it looks like in your piece. So now I'm going to show you how I put that in. There we go. Okay, so let's see what we do here. Vicki, where did you get the hearts from? I got them from a little boutique store here in Las Vegas last year. It's called Rodworks. If you live in an area, there are a few Rodworks around the states. Mostly, I think, West Coast. I'm not sure. Uh, they came out of Utah, but there is um, one location here in Las Vegas. And I got them at a cute, it's just like a tiny little cute home decor store that sold things. So it's fun to get something a little different. Um, I'm sure everybody's got these little tiny ones every here and there. Um, and you make ornaments of all kinds. That's kind of cool. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Ruth, you go, you fly a lot. You just close your eyes. <laughs> That's good advice. I'll try it. I'll try it. Uh, Beverly, I am in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm in Southern Nevada. Southern Las Vegas, Nevada. And you'd think that I'd say, oh, I've been everywhere, but no, I've only been here. I haven't traveled very much, but it's okay. Um, let's see, Lisa, Nancy Black, Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby. Okay, not sure what that's for. All right, guys, so I'm going to attach this right here, just, just close to this second bow down here. So I'm going to add a little bit to this piece, and then we'll see if I need to put, if anything, I'll just add a ficus sleeve to it, because I don't want it to... I don't want it to take away from the heart that's right here, so I'm just going to kind of pick a spot and pull it through and see if it agrees with me on this side. Come on, guys. Remember, I don't want to cover up too much of the frame because I want this frame to be the... This frame is going to be the, the, this is the main star, the superstar of this piece, because it's just so pretty. I mean, normally you guys are used to seeing my pieces having so much extra, extra goodies here and there. 
and this is moving around too much so I need to actually wrap this around two parts I only wrapped it around one I gotta take it back out and wrap it around two so I think I might go under this piece and right through here This is different than your average grapevine, you guys. This is this is a little bit, obviously you can see I'm kind of struggling. It's a little awkward. So you make sure you have a good amount of space on your table in front of you. Um, I got, you know, my tripod and my lights and stuff. So that's a little crowded for you guys to see. But if you're doing this on your own or you have one of these little odd shaped goodies somewhere, um, it's a little awkward. It's not end of, end of days awkward. It's just awkward. It's not hard. It's not horrible. So I'm just wrapping that thing back around the back of it, twisted it. And so here on the front, I haven't adjusted it yet, but that's pretty much what it is. It gives you just an extra little pop of, of ribbon that adds to it. Kind of shows you. It, it's all a little bit cohesive. It adds. Looks cute. And yes, guys, I have to put some greenery in here. It just I just can't leave it alone. i got to put some greenery on it. So this is where I'm not going to put an entire ficus pick because it's too much. I'm going to cut off another leaf. I'm just putting one in here because it's just a little accent. I don't want it to over uh, overwhelm anything. So I'm going to dip this guy in here. My glue skillet. I put enough little glue. You guys can even see there's just glue on the end of that right there. And I'm going to glue that in off to the right here on that side. And I had an extra one of these fall off and I'm going to place that in there too. Again, I'm just dipping the bottom of that into my glue skillet and I'm just placing it right into the, it's right into, I guess, is it the apex? I'm right into the center of where this bow comes together. So it looks like everything has come out together on its own. Um, and that's what that little bow turns into. I got the ficus leaf here. I've got this extra greenery piece coming out here. You've got your bows. And that's pretty much what you're working with. Oh, thank you. I love it. I see all the hearts, you guys. Ooh, this that just broke. <laughs> that's what happens when you're holding it by the wrong piece. I just broke a piece of it. All right, I'll have to take that out. Oh, yeah. One of the sticks, one of the stick supports kind of broke back here. But that's okay. Part of the job. So what do you think, you guys? Uh, Connie, oh my gosh, Winnie, this is stunning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um... Oh, Jan, you had a hard time taking your tree down this year. It was really, oh, yeah, I, I'm going to be doing that probably next weekend or the weekend after. It's not going to be, oh, it's going to be sad. I have, a, every time I, every night I eat dinner, I have all the lights out and I still have my, my Christmas tree lights on. So we had ceiling fans installed last week at the house. I wonder if the people that came over thought it was a little strange because I still had two Christmas trees in my living room. <laughs> I was like, yeah, they probably see some crazy stuff going into everyone's house. But yeah, this time they saw two Christmas trees in a house that are still up. Thank you guys for all the hearts. I love it. It's so nice. Um, oh, Beverly, you're in Idaho right above me. Nice. Love it. Love it. Love it. it turned out very pretty. Love it. Perfect. You guys, it's so great. You're turning into such a wonderful crowd. I, I really do look forward to hanging out with you guys. It's so much fun. The only, the only other best part it could be is if we did this in person. It would be so much better. I mean, of course, we all live in some crazy, crazy distances apart, but this is, it's kind of cool to share this interest with everybody. So, yeah, I think it turned out really good. It's very festive. It's very springy. It's still not just, just you know, hearts are on it, but um, this turned out very spring, very life, very fresh. It's very, very nice. It's making me happy just looking at it. So um, I ordered some boxes from Amazon. So as soon as I get a box for it, you guys, this is going to be listed on Etsy. It'll be for sale. Um, I'm going to make some more stuff. I got an Easter lantern planned, planned for you guys, which is a lantern swag, kind of like this one. I'll show you real quick. Um... This is an Easter swag I made last year. This will also be posted on my Etsy shop. Let me take it off for you real quick. So and if you don't know what a lantern swag is, it's a, a, like a tiny little arrangement with a bow that you attach to a lantern. So it ties on, and this is what it is. So here's your lantern. Here's a swag. There's the back of it. So here's where I've made the piece, and I, you tie ribbon to it, and you basically situate that onto your lantern and tie it to the top of your lantern and they're interchangeable for whatever season Julie Samaka has made some beautiful ones if you go over to her page she's got a couple tutorials on them also 
Uh, for Chris, she's done a Christmas one and some, some Halloween ones with red and black. Very gorgeous. Very gorgeous. Um, so basically, you got a little flower up top here. And it lays kind of off to the side. And you kind of adjust things how you want it. But there's some Easter eggs in here and some other flowers and florals to just it just adds a little bit to your lantern wherever you want so I'll be doing an Easter themed lantern swag for you guys very shortly um, thinking I probably will have another Valentine's wreath but this one will be mesh because I do want to show you guys another Probo um, tutorial that I, I want to do I only did the one when I opened it and I've gotten a lot better at using that guy so um, there'll be one of those and then um, you guys really were responsive for the crosses so I'll probably do maybe one of my Easter wreaths with the cross on it. A really, it's a, it's a good size cross. It's, it's gorgeous. It's very gorgeous. So I got a lot of things planned for you guys. Stay tuned. Keep the comments coming. Keep the suggestions. If you have any custom orders, I take those also as well. Just message my shop or Etsy or my Facebook page. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate all of you guys. And again, my Facebook fans, thank you so much for following me. You guys continued support. Very heartwarming. And it's always fun to hang out with you guys for a little bit every day, or I should say every week. If, I, if we did every day, you guys would probably get sick of how much I love to talk. So, you know, some of you already do. Anyways, <laughs> um, thank you guys. Everything has been wonderful so far. I'm glad I can take this, with, this journey with you guys. So today's piece ended up very well. Um, turned out pretty good just for, for grabbing some stuff. I couldn't help but get my hands on these, uh, these new frames. So... Thank you all. I'll take a look at my comments. I'll go back through them at the end of this and I'll try to answer as many as I can. If you guys have questions, just throw them at me, comment on this video. Um, that's about it. Um, until next time. Um, oh, Jan says I'm the bomb. <laughs> Connie. All right. I love you. Thanks guys. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. So uh, until next time, you guys take care and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.